Chapter 91, Big Trouble You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 91. Big Trouble in the Next Room, Meng Haizhou and Li Zhen's face instantly grew unsightly as they heard this. Say hundreds of thousands of tales of silver, although not a small number, for them it wasn't too much either. It was a number that they could afford without much difficulty. And after the loss that they took in the Thousand Gold Hall, these kids' pants were taken down and were beaten till their asses turned black and blue. And this trip that they made here was under specific directions. Their aim was to acquire this jade sea coral at any cost. Magnificent Jewel Hall, three days before each auction, it would routinely send to every major family in the Tian Xiang Kingdom, a list of all the items which were to be auctioned on that particular day. And, when Li Yuran reviewed this list and saw this jade sea coral up on the list of items, he immediately sent out an order, the Li family must get hold of this jade sea coral at any cost. In fact, this auction listings, was regularly sent to the Jun family too. But, the Jun family never seemed to participate in any of such occasions and over time, they stopped sending the list to the Jun family's residence. Besides, Jun Moe's intention to collect herbs for his treatments were extremely secretive. In fact only three people in the Jun residence knew about the whole situation. If it wasn't for the coincidence of me running into Tang Yuan today, I'm afraid that we surely would have missed the chance to obtain this burning heart meridian. Thought Jun Emosia. This particular jade sea coral, although valuable and has excellent properties, it is but secondary and only serves as an auxiliary item for cultivation. However, to Grand Preceptor Li Shang, who had a broken dantin, this was a magic treasure which could ensure longevity. There was hope for Ri. Cultivation. Because, Li Yuran had found out from a reliable source that, using this special type of jade sea coral along with some special methods, it was even possible for one with a broken dantin to cultivate again. How fortunate would the Li family be if Li Shang could cultivate again? And this effect, only a select few in the entire Tian Xiang kingdom knew about it. Li Yuran had been long looking for this secret, but, it had always eluded him. If Li Shang could prolong his life by a few more years or decades, to the Li family, how much of a benefit would it be? So, this piece of jade sea coral might just be an expensive piece of decoration but to the Li family, it directly affected their future. Now that this has appeared in the auction, it was a great opportunity. So, the Li family was determined to obtain this jade sea coral and Li Yuran had ordered Li Zheng and Meng Haizhou to obtain this item at all costs. If Li Yuran knew that his meticulously thought out plan would be broken down today, he would surely have taken this issue up personally and would not have left it for his lackeys. The Meng and Li family teaming up with these two families extreme prestige if they bid early on, with a huge amount they would be able to intimidate all the other interested parties, this was the big plan that they had come up with in order to acquire this item without much difficulty. How would they have expected that they would encounter this fatty today? Their old enemy. Not only that, Jun Mo Xia with this spiritual power spread out, had already realized their intentions completely. But, this was something which no one knew. Though the old man on the stage was a well-experienced auctioneer, the loud shout by Tang Yuan still managed to startle him completely. For a long time, there was complete silence in the hall when suddenly one could hear the gnashing of teeth and a shout, I bid 1.2 million. Li Jin really braced himself to let out this bid. In reality though, this was not the maximum of their budget, and they could go more as much as 2 million, but it was just in a hope that it might scare Fatty Tang away. Without even faltering a beat, Tang Yuan roared at the top of his voice, Fools! Are you trying to scare me away with this pitiful amount? I bid two million. Fatty really and truly shouted out with all his heart. This activity to make those annoying guys bleed, was an especially fun and enjoyable activity. Li Zhen and Meng Hai Zhou next door almost vomited blood as they heard this. For this bidding war, Li Yuran had handed them about two million tails of silver. These guys had estimated that though that piece of jade was rare and precious, it would go for about one million in the worst-case scenario. 
Two million was definitely a lot of money and totally excessive. The two of them even were plotting on how to seize some of the leftover money and pocket it. They were planning on taking it as a compensation for their losses in the thousand gold haul. Now, all of their plans were spoilt as this damn fatty had been calling ridiculous prices and forced them to go even beyond than what they could. As for asking Li Yuran for reimbursement for the money they might be spending extra that they did not even dare to imagine that. 2.4 million. This was Li Zhen's voice. He was already extremely angry with his face turning green to blue to purple from the rising frustration and anger and shouted, Tang Yuan. Do you really want this jade sea coral? This stuff is absolutely of no use to you. Just give it up. Bullshit. How do you know that this is useless to I, your father? Even if it is useless to me, why are you spouting this rubbish? What is it to you? You believe you are very smart and intelligent. Tang Yuan grunted and stamped his foot down making the whole box tremble and shouted, 3 million. Even though the walls of these boxes were soundproofed but with all the yelling, everyone could hear the commotion that was taking place. Meng Hai Zhou's voice sounded out a bit stammering with anger, 3.5 million. After he called out, he jumped out and came to the door of the Tang family's box and shouted, Fatty Tang, before, because of the incident at the Thousand Gold Hall, you already extorted my family of two million tails of silver far beyond what your losses were. What do you want now? Your behavior here is clearly unreasonable. I'll be sure to remember this in the future. Ha! Huh. You two are really strange. Tang Yuan was the first to bid one million on this piece of jade. No other person was interested, there was no haggling. He clearly had won the bid. But, it was clear that you deliberately bid later on to increase the price of this item. It is you who has malicious intentions against him, this, everyone here can see and testify to. Now, how come you accuse my good friend here of your crimes? It wasn't Tang Yuan who said these words but Jun Mos Yeah. He continued, now you tell me, isn't it your Li and Meng family which is being unreasonable? As Jun Mos Yeah said that, in the opposite box of the Tian Xiang royal kingdom, there sounded a girl's soft voice which sounded pleasantly surprised, Jun Mos Yeah is. This voice was full of joy, excitement, full of dot relief. Jun Mos Yeah. This is none of your business. Don't poke your nose into this. Meng Hai Zhou's voice sounded with his face livid and voice full of anger. The last time he had seen him, it was when he was out to teach this debauchee a lesson and swindle him. But, the whole plan blew up in his face, with him losing all of his money. Because of this, he had to face a family discipline action by the elders at his family. But, this did not end there as, Tang Yuan had come back later and then blackmailed him for additional two million tails of silver. The injuries he had faced after the beating had not healed yet and seeing these two together now, it did not really bring pleasant feelings to his mind. My affair is his affair. Now, cut the crap. If you want something, then take out the money. If you have no money, then get the hell out. Tang Yuan shouted like a madman with his belly fat rolling all over the place. I bid four million. Would you dare fight? Your father, I, is filled with money. I'll tell you something, I've so much money that I cannot simply burn it away fast enough. Now, do you dare? Everyone in the hall was looking up astonished. On one side was Li and Meng families together, while on the other you had the Tang and Jun families. This clearly had become a fight between these four major families to vent out their grudges and resentment and ceased to be a simple bidding war. Everyone simply watched on discreetly with their mouth closed. Grandpa Jun had just caused a bloodbath in the capital recently and the blood on the streets had not even dried up yet. Who would have the courage to cause trouble? Fiercely swearing, Meng Hai Zhou was trembling with anger standing outside the box. He really wanted to walk out of this whole mess but in the end did not dare to go against Li Yuran as he would have his teeth broken and would also have to swallow it back down with his blood. With frustration, Meng Hai Zhou shouted, I bid five million. Five million tails of silver. 
Tang Yuan, do you have the guts to compete with me? Jun Mo Xie squinted slightly. With his spiritual awareness spread out, he could easily pick up every fluctuation in emotions of the people surrounded by his soul's power. He could make out that Meng Haizhou was close to the point of hysteria. He also knew that this was probably the highest number that Meng Haizhou and Li Zhen would be able to scrape out. For Tang Yuan to bid any further, it would simply result in drilling a hole through their pockets and having to take home that piece of jade. Tang Yuan understood and laughed, young master Meng really has a deep pocket eh? Five million tails of silver. Paying ten times more than the five hundred thousand that this piece of jade is worth, I really admire you. Admire you from the bottom of my heart. Actually, this young master has not enough money to continue, and I'm willing to give this piece of jade to you. He then leaned over and whispered into Meng Hai Zhou's ear mysteriously, young master Meng. In fact, I did not have any money at all today. I was just bidding for fun. Meng Hai Zhou's eyes suddenly became round and wide, staring at Tang Yuan with a pale trembling finger pointed at him he stood there for a few breaths of time before coughing up blood and staggering back. Young Master Meng is extremely weak eh? Yeah. Fatty just casually said that he had no money, Jun Mo Xie repeatedly shook his head as he looked at the shivering Meng Hai Zhou as he fell to the ground and then contemptuously said, you cannot even stand such a simple sentence eh? Yeah. Real Contemptuous Chapter 92 Extremely Shady You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 92 Extremely Shady Shaking his head, Tang Yuan retorted, It is truly despicable. In fact, I have some money with me to use for the bidding. But, if I did not have sufficient money, I dare not outbid others. This is the magnificent jewel hall after all. Even if one had to admit the truth, they still would have enough face left to live. If not, I'd rather suggest to hang yourself from a tree to save face for your family so that they can at least come out of the house in peace. But, it seems that your family has given you a lot of money to spend so casually on such a cheap item, the whole family is looking to despise and scoff at others. Truly looking at others with disdain eh? As the whole farce on the Jade Sea Coral came to an end, it was Meng Hai Zhou who paid ten times the amount to obtain it and seemingly won the bidding war. But, in the eyes of all those present there was nothing but contempt for Meng Hai Zhou and they truly despised him. To buy an item worth a maximum of 500,000 for 5 million, could not even be considered thrifty anymore, it was simply in the realm of insanity. But, at the same time, Meng Hai Zhou also received a lot of sympathy from those in the hall. They all thought that this young master was short-sighted and even conceited. He went a bit overboard and received the appropriate rewards for his actions. This jade sea coral was something that Tang Yuan was clearly determined to win. After all, Tang Yuan shouted the price of 1 million straight out after the item was bought out and this bid of 1 million was much more than the jade sea coral was worth, while, the Li and Meng duo were clearly trying to drive up the price of this item to make things difficult for the Tang family because of their familial disputes. Just that, he had not expected that although the other party seemed to be determined to win this item, but in the end they played their hand a bit too forcefully with the ten times bid because of which Tang Yuan had no option but to withdraw from the bidding war. But, this foolish action by Meng Hai Zhou was simply tantamount to shooting oneself in his own leg. What goes around comes around eh? Karma surely exists. People who were watching Tang Yuan sighed and thought, ah kid. You are simply too naive and simple. If you had simply started to bid on this item slowly and carefully, you might have just bought it. There was no need to rush and bid like crazy making your intentions known. When one watched the expressions of Li Zhen and Meng Haizhou, it was unexpectedly the same as Tang Yuan's, but Tang Yuan's expression was actually the one which depicted taking joy in calamity and delight in disaster. He was exceptionally happy of playing such a dirty trick on them. How was it to shoot yourself in your own feet, you bast asterisk rds? Tang Yuan outwardly showed the expression of the one being the victim here and others having ganged up on him and taken advantage of him while he suffered a big loss, but, inside his heart he was delighted. 
Li Zhen and Meng Haizhou were both driven to the extent of poverty by him and looked like complete fools in front of others. This not only helped him vent his frustration, but also let him have his payback at his enemies with interest. It was comfortable feeling, he was happy, it was simply great. At this time, the servant of the magnificent jewel hall walked over with a tray carrying the jade sea coral which was covered with a red silk cloth. Li Zhen and Meng Haizhou were gnashing their teeth and their heart was bleeding with pain, however, they still managed to squeeze out a smile in the end to keep up pretenses. If these two simply continued to cry their hearts out and felt saddened by this turn of events then that was one thing, but, despite them having a heartache, they also felt a glimmer of relief and this immediately caught Jun Emosia's attention. The origins and the true mysteries behind this jade sea coral was something that he had asked Tang Yuan about, but, he too was unclear about it and this led to him having more doubts about this. This stuff seems to be exceptionally useful to them and looks like they want to obtain it all cost. Hmm what is useful and advantageous to one's enemy is extremely disadvantageous to oneself. This is not good, I must destroy this opportunity. No matter what the use of this is, in short, only when it becomes useless will Jun Mo Xie feel at ease. Wow! This is the precious jade sea coral worth 5 million air. Surely enough, it is like even the fart of an immortal is outstanding air. Jun Mo Xie laughed and chided as Li Zhen stood there and carefully received the jade sea coral. At the same time, Jun Mo Xie let out a soft whistle before nudging Tang Yuan gently with his toe. Dot Tang Yuan immediately understood Jun Mo Xie's intention and suddenly put on a solemn expression, looked at the jade sea coral and sighed and with a sad face said, Third young master Jun, what is to be done? Before I came down here, grandfather had given me a order to obtain this piece of jade and bring it back home else he'd give me a beating but now, you see that your elder brother here might actually get killed. The words spoken by him were not whispered and Li Zhen and others could easily hear all that was said clearly. Upon hearing this, they somewhat felt a lot better from their previously depressed state. They now realized why this guy was bidding so high and also what gave Fatty the courage to go almost all out. But thinking of all this, they now felt a bit pleased with themselves. They did not expect that they had unexpectedly managed to defeat Grandpa Tang and inflict damage upon Tang Yuan. Really that IT was great. Jun Mo Xie curled his mouth and his face changed into a dismissive attitude and said, Well, isn't that just a piece of jade sea coral? What are you guys getting so flushed and angry by struggling over something like this? This is something that my family has several of. I, your father, Say with confidence that it is not rare at all. What? Li Zhen's face instantly reddened as he shouted, Jun Mo Xie, you little braggart. Your Jun family is already so poor and it is on the verge of collapsing and on the decline, yet you still claim to have such a good item. Even several of these. Are you not worried that you might die by choking on that big glib tongue of yours? Jun Mo Xie suddenly jumped up and sprang to his feet and then angrily rebuked, Li Zhen, what are you talking about? Several of this type of jade sea coral was bestowed upon my grandfather by his majesty the emperor. Not only that, those are much bigger than this one that you are holding. I'm really surprised at your stupidity and ignorance. Li Zhen laughed and said, this is really ridiculous Jun Mo Xie. What does a bumpkin like you know about what this is? This is a winterberry jade sea coral. A winterberry jade sea coral, do you understand? I really cannot be bothered to talk to you. My family also has such jade sea coral. They are so dot so big. Jun Mo Xie wildly gestured with his hands. Fatty Tang has seen them, I am not lying to you. It seemed that Jun Mo Xie simply did not believe that Li Zhen understood what he was trying to say with his gestures and hence even made Tang Yuan his witness. Jun Mo Xie got closer to Li Zhen to show how big his jade sea corals were in comparison to the ones Li Zhen was holding. As Jun Mo Xie was gesturing, he seemed to draw out a size of more than double of what Li Zhen was holding and then snorted in disdain as he said, My family's items are much better than the one you are holding. But, as Jun Mo Xie was gesturing wildly, 
in his heart he was secretly executing the art of unlocking heaven's fortune at top speed and directing it towards the jade sea coral. He suddenly felt a faint trace of air current coming out of the jade sea coral. Upon coming in contact with this, he found that his xian qi in his body became much more dense and significantly became active. So, it turns out that this piece of jade sea coral is extremely useful for cultivation of xian qi. Jun Amos yes snorted in his heart. But this aura is somewhat similar to my own exquisite Hongjun Pagoda air. With an intention from his mind, he prepared to take in these streams of gas into his own meridians and assimilate with his own qi. But, as he did this, he suddenly felt extreme discomfort. He realized that inside his own consciousness, the exquisite Hongjun Pagoda had started rotating, emitting a white mist which actually pushed out this foreign gas from his meridians. They repel each other. Jun Emo Xia exclaimed as he squinted his eyes. At this time, Li Zhen was simply seething with anger looking at Jun Emo Xia's antics. He quickly took off the red silk that was covering the, the plate and roared, this is a winterberry jade sea coral. Winterberry. What you have at your place is the ordinary kind. Ordinary. You know fart. Jun Emo Xia simply laughed and said, whatever. No matter what type of jade sea coral it is, the texture and the quality of the material remains the same. Li Zhen, you really may be a country bumpkin. To use five million tails of silver to buy trash. He then proceeded to casually place his hand on the jade sea coral. Rubbing it, the frowned and said, hmm looks a little different. Jun Emo Xia quickly operated the art of unlocking heaven's fortune at its full power and then suddenly inserted a thin wisp of the formidable white gas inside the jade sea coral. These two types of gases collided against each other opposing each other's existence seemingly as if only one can stay while the other has to disappear. The internal gas became distorted moving all over the place and churning around trying to remove the wisp of white gas. But, with Jun Emo Xia being so close at hand, how could he let that happen? He was operating the art of unlocking heaven's fortune at its full power covering and surrounding the internal gas layer by layer with his white gas. Jun Emo Xia with his powerful soul could now make out that at this moment this piece of jade sea coral was nothing but a huge mass storing wild violent gases which would dissipate with time. Jun Emo Xia's stomach was clenched hard as he laughed internally evilly, this piece of jade sea coral is now something that cannot be used that wow dot ha. How is it? Compared with the junk that you have at home, it is not the same, right? Ha ha ha. Li Zhen laughed his heart out thinking of winning the argument. The seemingly disappointed appearance which implied Jun Emo Xia accepting his loss was extremely refreshing for him. Really is not quite the same. Jun Emo Xia with his face pale, pulled his hand back. Rubbing his nose, his face puzzled, he questioned, even though both are jade sea corals, how is it not the same? Tang Yuan also touched it and was also seemingly in great surprise and amazed. Li Zhen and Meng Hai Zhou's egos gained a huge boost seeing their reactions. Their chests swelled with great pride and were laughing without a break. Only after a great time, they looked with disdain and fiercely stared at both Jun Emo Xia and Tang Yuan before scoffing, that's enough of staring at this treasure. You don't have this right. Aren't you envious? Oh fatty dot ha ha ha. They both looked over at Tang Yuan, gloating with all their heart. Hmm you did not manage to obtain this jade sea coral. It would be wonderful to see how you go back and deal with your grandfather. Also, Making the Tang family lose. Dot, hmm, dot, maybe there is still hope for us to be compensated for today's losers. Jun Emo Xia had a look of embarrassment, but in his heart he thought, with what I, your father, did, it would be you too who would be dead. Chapter 93 Blazing Heart Meridian You are listening at Novel Full. Audio Chapter 93 Blazing Heart Meridian with such a large bid happening early on in the auction process, although in the next few rounds of auctions the money spent was not less, it wasn't something astonishing and naturally did not cause much of a sensation. And finally, 
It was the turn of what June Amosia had come here with high anticipation, the Blazing Heart Meridian. The Blazing Heart Meridian is a highly toxic variety of grass. Also called as bone mist, when an ordinary person is exposed to it by even a bit, they would be frightened stiff. It would be akin to their very soul flying away and scattering into the wind. However, for a certain set of people, it can enable them to have an unexpected recovery. It would be a truly priceless treasure for them. Especially if people are infected with highly toxic poisons, a small dose of this would have high restraining effect on the poisons and quite immediately at that. If an advanced Xian Qi cultivator could use this to expel poisons from a person's limbs, he would be absolutely fine as this would prevent the poison from invading the healer's body and causing damage to his cultivation and body. The starting price is a whole 200,000 tails of silver and each additional bid has to be a minimum of 10,000 tails of silver. The old man held a white box in his hand and slowly opened the lid. There lay a single stem of lotus which was in its entirety completely black. It was slowly emitting enchanting and at the same time a dangerous set of aura and bewitching colors. No wonder the aura that it releases is so refined. The whole lotus has a deep black color. Just looking at that black color one can easily make out that this has aged for over 500 years. This is a lot stronger and has a better effect than the effect of the ordinary stuff. This is really good stuff, aged for over 500 years. It is surely a rare treasure. Jun Mo Xia sighed with relief and then whispered, Fatty Tang, this is what I want and then he held up three fingers. While in his heart he secretly thought, although the explanation that you gave is already quite detailed, but still you have missed one important use of this blazing heart meridian. But, if you actually come to know about this use, I'm afraid you really would not be ready to auction it off. As for the blazing heart meridian, in the mysterious continent on earth where he was from, once this herb had aged over 200 years, it was given another name, Heaven and Earth Bridge. This herb can be transformed into something that all warriors could only dream about, by using some special methods, after the removal of the toxicity inside this herb, if one consumed this, their meridians even if stagnant would be vitalized and would traverse the bridge between Heaven and Earth. It was enough to increase more than 20 years of martial arts skill. Tn. This stuff is truly broken. As for this herb which was aged for over 500 years, it was best among the best. With it, restoring Jun Wu Yi's health would have a probability of more than 90%. And this was just a conservative estimate by Jun Mo Xie. Jun Mo Xie's words and the old man on stage's words ended almost at the same time and Fatty Tang's voice immediately rang out, I bid for 300,000. Just as this sound rang out, in the hall, everyone's lips twitched. This prodigal son has come out. Although this time his bid is only an increment of 100,000, but compared to the minimum 10,000, it is still 10 times the amount. It is best not to even try and fight him. What if the price went beyond a limit and this guy just backed out? Wouldn't it be just shooting yourself in your own foot and then having no roof to cry either? Who hadn't seen the Meng family's young master spitting blood on the up there? As a result, after Fatty Tang's bid, the audience went completely cold with silence in an instant. They were stunned for a long time and spoke no words. To be honest, that purple-robed old man at the moment was somewhat dumbfounded. This blazing heart meridian surely could sell for over 800,000 but would he have to sell to for a mere 300,000 tails of silver. But the magnificent jewel hall were stringent on their rules and nothing could be done. The old man paused for a moment before raising his hammer and saying, Young Master Tang has bid 300,000, are there any higher bids? He paused a bit before continuing, 300,000 going once. 300,000 going twice. Suddenly a hoarse voice fiercely yelled out, I bid three million. This price was offered by none other than Li Zhen. BDNV just as everything was going well for Tang Yuan, his moment of joy was interrupted by this Li Zhen. He could not help but be furious and jumped out of the box into the doorway before yelling, You characterless neighbor. You dare fight and struggle with I, your father. 
I bid five hundred, suddenly Fatty Tang's mouth was covered by none other than June Emosia. Although he did not finish that sentence, but still, every person in the hall broke into cold sweat. Everyone could guess that this fatty was about to shout five million. Crazy. This fatty must be simply mad. Jun Emo Xie twisted his neck and walked out. Though his sickly appearance was still there, he seemed extremely domineering. Opening the curtain, his foot landed outside with a pop. Waving his hand, he took off his hat unbuttoned his long flowing robes, before shouting, Li Zhen. You son of a b asterisk tch. Are you seeking your death by bidding? Who are you to have a say in this? This is the auction house. You can bid a price, but, I cannot. Go bite me. Li Zhen flushed with anger before he too jumped out of his box but managed to trip in his landing. Who am I, Ba? Jun Emo Xie looking at him as if spotting a black sheep among the herd, twisted his mouth before saying, just drop this act. You just happened to empty your pockets with your previous bid and now you can also come up with additional three million tails of silver. Li Zhen, not that I think any less of you, but, can you show your three million to me now? As long as you can come up with that amount of money, the herb is yours. If you cannot bring out that amount, Damn, I'd like to ask what is it that you two have against Fatty Tang and why are you making things difficult for him on purpose? Do you and Tang Yuan have grudges? Or is it with Grandpa Tang that you have grudges? Opposite to them, one could faintly hear Dugu Xiaoyi let out a faint chuckle before saying, looking at this guy like this is really annoying. This black lotus, it is said that there really is only one strand of it. Truly don't know, he he. Princess Ling Meng who was sitting beside her reached out to touch Xiaoyi's forehead, this sister does not have a fever today, right? A moment ago it was the look of worry, and now, a changed attitude. These days, in the Dugu family, there was trouble everywhere because of Dugu Xiaoyi. Because, this little lady had suddenly changed a lot these days. Originally, she had an extremely cheerful and lively personality but, this inexplicably disappeared. She was quick to tears and even would sit in a daze, would not eat often, it made General Dugu extremely sad. He and several of his wives had also inquired to what was the problem but to no avail. He was forced to watch his precious and beloved granddaughter become thinner with each passing day. General Dugu could not do anything to change this situation and was extremely depressed about it. To relieve his frustration, he had caught several of his sons and nephews to administer a beating to them. Having Princess Ling Meng keep this young mistress of the Dugu family keep company had slightly improved her condition. Recently, she had received a notification from the magnificent Jewel Hall about the auction and these two came out here in a bid to catch some fresh air and relieve themselves hoping to enrich their mood but, Dugu Xiaoyi was extremely reluctant with this idea. But, who would know that after coming here, her sickly appearance would actually vanish and she would be in high spirits. How can that not be extremely surprising? Is this magnificent jewel hall some kind of divine healing medicine? Li Zhen looked at his friends and thought, not to mention the three million, if I am able to borrow from a few people here, even if I manage to collect one hundred thousand that will be a great thing. Now, looking at the three million figure, he could not help but be flabbergasted. A bunch of trash. I really cannot be bothered by you. Jun Emo Xie snorted in disdain before patting his ass and continuing, even, I, your father's fart is more valuable than the words that you spoke. The silver you have, cannot even be compared to the amount of maggots in shit, now can it? In an extremely arrogant manner, Jun Emo Xie turned to towards the public, showing that their pair had no need to spend additional money before shouting, who else wants this herb? You are all welcome to try, come on. Then with a snap of his fingers added, but be ready to bring out several million tails of silver. People in the hall pretended as if they heard nothing and turned a deaf ear to Jun Emo Xie's provocations. Millions to buy a herb. This is just simply asking to be robbed. Which normal sane-headed person would do such a stupid thing? 
Two parts of huge spiritual pressure descended upon Jun Mo Xia from an unknown location abruptly, Jun Mo Xia showed a snowy white complexion and he started running his mental power at full force. Jun Mo Xia was quite cunning and he understood what was going on. He started to shiver a bit before shouting, it feels terrible, why is it so cold here? The spiritual pressure that were overlooking him, checked him out thoroughly and upon not finding anything amiss, they instantly disappeared. Jun Mo Xia sneered at the two in his heart, for you two uncles to hope to grasp anything from me, you guys are nothing but mere circus performers in my eyes. Chapter 94, Twists and Turns You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 94 Twists and turns at this moment the old man in the purple robe, closed his eyes and then nodded his head. It seemed as if he was listening to what the people were talking about. His face displayed a slightly pained expression, then disappeared without trace before he opened his eyes and shouted, Tang Yuan to buy the Blazing Heart Meridian has already bid 5 million, is there anyone who wishes to bid higher than 5 million? Jun Mo Xie suddenly reeled back and stared at the old man on stage and said, Senior, this matter is a bit troublesome. The situation here is clear that Li Zhen is indulging in malicious bidding and has no means to back up his bids. Whereas none of my friends actually did so, why is it necessary to force the price to 5 million? People not participating in the bidding process of this auction are forbidden from speaking and disrupting the process. Jun Mo Xia was completely ignored by the purple-robed old man and simply turned towards Fatty Tang before saying, Mr. Tang may raise the objection. Tang Yuan who usually was filled with arrogance, now, was totally submissive and quietly whispered, I did not happen to say how much exactly just now. Jun Mo Xia suddenly observed that this fat friend who usually was bursting with courage, cower over and act meek. It was totally unlike his usual self where he was arrogant and despotic. Now, he was acting strangely even when faced with paying the astronomical amount of 5 million silver tails. This was utter nonsense. Moreover, it seemed that the magnificent jewel hall was deliberately making things difficult for them. Jun Mo Xia was after all the evil monarch. Pride was something that was deeply seeped into his bones. How could he eat this loss by laying low? With a sneer he said, it seems some things are really hard to sell, even if it is the magnificent jewel hall. Fatty Tang just called out, 500 and nothing more. When did he say 5 million? If the magnificent jewel hall really wants to sell, then, 500 silver, it is a good deal. Indeed, it was just as Jun Mo Xie said. Fatty Tang only called out, 500, and did not have enough time to shout out, 5 million, before Jun Mo Xie covered his mouth. For some time, both the sides actually froze. Li Zhen and others actually had a happy expression on their face, looking at Jun Mo Xie joke around with the magnificent jewel hall. The crowd was completely silent as on one side you had the magnificent jewel hall and on the other side, the all-powerful Jun family. Both sides were powers that they simply dared not offend. Suddenly breaking the stillness in the hall, there sounded a voice. This voice was something that no one could locate where it came from. It seemed to come from everywhere and at the same time, nowhere. The rules of the magnificent jewel hall cannot be broken. Since a bid was made and the price spoken, that is it. The voice was vague and soft but it could be heard clearly by everyone present. The complexion of the purple-robed old man suddenly changed as he said, the magnificent jewel hall will never buy or sell using compulsion. Regardless of whether the Jun and Tang family's young masters will visit again, it is inconsequential. Today, this auction house has established that it was Tang Yuan who has placed the bid of 5 million. As soon as the mysterious character spoke out, the attitude of this old man had clearly toughened up in an instant. Even Jun Mo Xie who was the best killer and had a calm countenance, couldn't help but be surprised and there was a slight change in his expression. Five million tails of silver was surely a lot of money, but, this was not something that was so huge that it would be coveted by the magnificent jewel hall. The real reason was, the unexpected voice that sounded out. 
The voice transmission clearly showed how high the skill of that master was and it was even comparable to the initial stages of the sky rank. But dot but, why would such an expert want to make Fatty Tang feel embarrassed? Or, is it to make things difficult for me? Strength was one thing, but Jun M. O. Xia was haughty by nature. How could he eat this loss by simply lying low, without speaking out his grievances? This fight over five million tails of silver was simply a joke to him. With the great effect of the 500-year-old burning heart meridian on Jun Wu Yi's treatment, the value for that, not to mention five million tails, even if he had to pay twice, the third young master Jun was determined to win this item. But, winning a bidding war and paying the appropriate amount was one thing and being taken advantage of was another altogether. If right now, he was forced to hand over five million tails of silver for the transaction, regardless of whether the deal was something which was cost-effective in the overall perspective, he would be stifled and would feel like dying altogether. Moreover, it became clear at this point that the magnificent Jewel Hall was simply trying to twist words to force logic. What Jun M. O. Xie most hated was seeing people use strength to oppress others. And, this situation was no exception. What is the rule that shouldn't be broken? Ha ha ha. Jun M. O. Xie, if previously was simply play-acting, but at this moment became really angry. With a sneer, Jun M. O. Xie continued, if that's the case, then this young master would sit here every single day to rise prices and let the magnificent jewel hall fill its pockets. The son of the Jun family, the implications behind your words are not understood by me. Is it that the reputed Tian Xiang kingdom's Jun family wish to go against my magnificent jewel hall? That voice immediately rang out in the hall and it was filled with anger. Everyone could clearly see the hint of threat veiled in that sentence and the heavy pressure being emitted by that person made it difficult for many people who were seated in the hall to breathe. The people observing this situation develop, all watched Jun M. O. Xie with pity in their eyes thinking, all because of this debauchee son running of his mouth, he has attracted a disaster to his home. This Jun M. O. Xie really acts recklessly eh. He even dares to provoke the magnificent jewel hall eh. Li Zhen and Meng Hai Zhou were totally elated. Although today, they had spent more and more money, but if it is in this matter, if the magnificent Jewel Hall and the Jun family became enemies, even spending ten times the amount would totally be money well spent. In a box opposite them, Duga Xiaoyi anxiously stamped her feet down saying, this pig head. He actually dares to openly defy the magnificent Jewel Hall. How can this be of any good? With extreme anxiety she held Princess Ling Ming's hand as she observed on with even more concentration. Jun M. O. Xie's heart grew extremely vigilant as he heard the words spoken by that expert. This guy is clearly deliberate in creating a rift between the Jun family and the Magnificent Jewel Hall openly, do we have some grudges with the Magnificent Jewel Hall? Thinking up to this point, he decided to speak no more nonsense and cut to the chase. Filling the empty parts with gossip, isn't that the truth? You said that Tang Yuan bid an amount of five million, but who here can testify that they heard this? All I heard was five hundred and nothing more. Isn't that what it should be then? In addition, Li Zhen bid an amount of three million tails of silver. But, has the magnificent jewel hall not thought of if he can take it out or not? If he can't take it out, is it right to rise prices with empty pockets? You asked if the Jun family is going against the magnificent jewel hall. Then I have to ask, is this a means of accumulating wealth by the magnificent jewel hall that it has deliberately arranged? As Jun M. O. Xie said these words, everyone present was surprised and shocked. This sentence was simply tantamount to say that the magnificent jewel hall and the Li family had teamed up to fleece Tang Yuan of his money. This would be a serious blow to the reputation of Magnificent Jewel Hall. The Magnificent Jewel Hall had made an oversight of this particular point and Jun M. O. Xie promptly seized this flaw. The Magnificent Jewel Hall in some obvious manner of injustice were deliberately making things difficult and Jun M. O. Xie had fearlessly jumped out to openly accuse them of their wrongdoings. The hall was completely quiet and one couldn't hear the people breathing. To dare question the magnificent jewel hall, 
who no one had opposed in hundreds of years. Today, the people were enlightened and grew in experience. After a long time, the mysterious voice again spoke up, this matter is actually an oversight. This lord will look into it, the voice was still steady, but, it exhibited a hint of reluctance. Everyone could easily imagine the powerful expert trembling and seething with anger to be forced to recant his words and then shamelessly speak out calmly as if nothing had happened. Jun Mo Xia was completely stunned. The magnificent jewel hall had deliberately made things difficult for them and wanted to embarrass them but suddenly, they recant and go back on their words and actions. First oppress, then change their behavior. This was truly strange. It seemed as if he himself did not know if an insider existed or not. While Jun Mo Xia was thinking this, the voice sounded out again, Li Zhen, you just bid three million tails of silver. Would you care to take the money out? Sitting comfortably, Li Zhen and company were enjoying the scene being played out and were happy at Jun Mo Xia and Tang Yuan's misery. But, suddenly when Li Zhen heard the voice being directed at him and all his happiness suddenly crumbled down. His thoughts ran real quick before he bent in ceremony, before, of the younger generation was still unhappy that Tang Yuan was repeatedly upsetting the magnificent jewel hall's decorum and that's why I felt the need to step up and come forward to expose his dark and ugly face. The voice with impatience quickly retorted, this lord, has not asked you of what your motivation was. I only asked you about the three million tails of silver that you bid. Li Zhen could not but be embarrassed before saying, Junior here does not have three million tails of silver, but, this junior acted merely because of the disruptions caused by Tang Yuan and not to disturb the proceedings of the magnificent jewel hall, bastard. The voice now seemed to have totally lose its calmness and did not even bother to disguise its anger. The voice then coldly sounded, even without having the requisite amount of silver, you still dare bid. Disturbing the proceedings at this place, how is it Tang Yuan that's disturbing and causing a ruckus? It is clearly you who doesn't hold the magnificent jewel hall in any regard at all. You broke the rules of the magnificent jewel hall, how can I let this pass? Guards, come. This person is expelled from the magnificent jewel hall effective immediately. The Li family's box is effectively cancelled and they are permanently disqualified from ever setting foot into the magnificent jewel hall. As the voice sounded out, several waiters appeared outside the Li family's box. Li Zhen directly stood up and directly started to walk out. He was someone who was extremely arrogant and had been accustomed to such a lifestyle since he was young. However, at this moment, he gave no resistance, did not even bother to plead for mercy. His face pale and slumped over he walked out. Jun Mo Xie sitting on the sidelines, felt something was more and more wrong. This clearly is the case of flying into range out of humiliation. But, why are things going this way? Even if Li Zhen made a mistake, that is simply not a reason enough to throw him out and deprive the entire Li family of its qualifications to enter the magnificent jewel hall. If I actually had handled the matter of this malicious bidding of Li Zhen improperly, it would have been Tang Yuan who would have been forced. I'd like to see how the magnificent jewel hall justifies all their actions, even if you have a thousand good ideas, your father, I, am not afraid. At worst, what is it that would happen? The Jun family lose rights to enter the magnificent jewel hall. What is the big deal? In that case, after achieving more success in the art of unlocking heaven's fortune, the first thing I'd have to do would be to pay a visit to these magnificent jewel hall guys. Li Zhen was causing trouble from the beginning, who couldn't see that. The magnificent jewel hall is not composed with a bunch of fools. Naturally they could clearly discern the situation but still intentionally made trouble for Jun Mo Xie. But, after being embarrassed, his attitude turned around suddenly and he focused his attention on Li Zhen. Suddenly a thought came about in Jun Mo Xie's head, did the situation develop like this because someone intervened. Therefore, the magnificent jewel hall had to change their original intention. But, just who is this person? Who has such huge capabilities? Just as Jun Mo Xie was thinking this in his heart, 
the voice sounded out again and everyone could hear clearly, June Emosia, although it was Li Zhen who had committed an error and flouted the rules of our magnificent jewel hall, but you still insulted my magnificent jewel hall. You gave no face to me and my magnificent jewel hall and I need an answer to this. The voice sounded quite harsh and apparently still contained and apparently some of the anger still lingered in his voice. Jun Mo Xia still had questions that were left unanswered and he was seething with anger bellow. Though this was the case, he realized that the mysterious person was leaving room for saving some face for himself and Jun Mo Xia decided that it would be best if he made a strategic retreat right now and played along. I'm still a fledgling without much of a power. Though that is the case, once my cultivation of this Xian Qi succeeds and reaches higher realms, I, your father, would surely be happy to drop in and put away with these pitiful pleasantries. Thinking up to this, Jun Mo Xia said, when did this junior insult the magnificent jewel hall? No right, this Li Zhen simply had a lot of malicious intentions against me and I was completely hoodwinked and blinded by his schemes. But, the magnificent jewel hall's mental perception is like a torch. You wouldn't let a new feather get harmed. You came out and saved everyone from this rotten apple without fear of the power backing him up. You are unyielding in your righteousness and the magnificent jewel hall is surely worth its reputation. This junior has admiration and nothing but admiration for the magnificent jewel hall. Suddenly Jun Mo Xie turned and said loudly, you guys can see that this magnificent jewel hall is surely the number one under the heavens. They have their products reasonably priced and treat both the young and old honestly. If they weren't impartial and just, how could such a chamber of commerce make one respect them? Just by doubting them wouldn't it make others blush with shame? To see how the magnificent jewel hall handled this controversy, this junior to have the esteemed and noble chamber of commerce like the magnificent jewel hall in the Tian Xiang kingdom is really proud. Let us all cheer and applaud for the magnificent jewel hall. Then Jun Mo Xie with a face filled with a look of sincere admiration and worship, took the initiative to clap loudly before continuing to talk, why do guys not applaud for our magnificent jewel hall? Do you people have other differing opinions? If so, then this junior would be the first to seek grievance on behalf of the magnificent jewel hall. Immediately the audience broke into a thunderous applause. While all were applauding, they were cursing in their hearts, ah. Shameless. Truly shameless. This Jun Mo Xie is shameless to a different degree altogether. He is so thick-skinned that he is not ashamed of this ass kissing at all. Only Duga Xiaoyi, among everyone present had a look of excitement. She was smiling happily and clapping vigorously, full of relief. The mysterious voice quieted down too and did not speak anything else. Inside the magnificent jewel hall, in an elegant room, two white-clothed middle-aged men sat opposite to each other. One of the white-clothed men gnashed his teeth fiercely while his face was depressed. He brought his hand down slamming on the desk hard, which crumbled from being unable to bear the blow and fiercely whispered, Jun Mo Xia. You are a really crafty young fellow. This lord will not spare you. The other white-clothed man closed his eyes and gave a very disapproving look. Frowning he said, this thing you shouldn't have, how strange that it was that young kid who got it. The previous white-robed man grunted in dissatisfaction as he said, but, that blazing heart meridian, I'm afraid that Jun Wu Yi saying up to this point, the man stopped. Jun Wu Yi. The other white-robed man stood up saying this and asked, what do you mean? The white-robed man grunted, closing his eyes and did not speak for a long time, while the other just stared at him for a long time before declaring in an awe-inspiring manner, I do not care about what grudges you and Jun Wu Yi have had in the past. But now, he is disabled and his life is destined to be doomed. If you have any plans to deal with him, I will kill you. He said this with absolute ruthlessness without a hint of mercy. This showed that he had the determination and intent to follow through with whatever he said. The white-robed man simply grunted twice and then turned away without speaking. The other white-robed man looked at him cold before suddenly saying, the auction, originally did not have the blazing heart meridian. But, it suddenly appeared, 
what is its exact source. Also, this blazing heart meridian, who was it that supplied it to you? And the most important of all, unexpectedly, request you to sell it in the Tian Xiang Imperial City. The white-robed man simply gave a cold shoulder to him and kept his eyes closed. He thought, if you really want to know, then why don't you ask the elders? Don't show your questioning face here. Do you really think I'm afraid of you? Yes or no, the other white-robed man's face became more solemn as he continued, yes or no that she dot specifically sent it as a present for Jun Wu Yi. Otherwise why would nine elders come together? Upon hearing the white-robed man's eyes snapped open as he shouted, what nonsense are you spouting? A trifling Jun Wu Yi, don't tell me is worth for us to sacrifice half the power of nine of our elders. I did not say anything about sacrificing nine of our elders' power. It was you who said it. What do you mean by that? His face again became murderous as he asked, What dirty tricks are you employing? So what? As long as the Jun family is spending 300,000 taels of silver to buy it, is it not the same as it falling in the hands of Jun Wu Yi? Your mother's fart. Only to give the blazing heart meridian is of less use than fart. Without a divine Xian expert controlling the process, with the poisonous potency of the blazing heart meridian, Jun Wu Wai will only die faster. You bastard. I will kill you. Enough. There came a voice from far, and it was very old but severely scolded the two, do not make me repeat myself. The two had their swords out just ready strike one another. They looked viciously at each other before finally sitting back down without saying a single word. Chapter 95 The Heart of a Young Woman You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. 95 The Heart of a Young Woman Inside the Hall, Jun M. O. Xie had a smile on his face. Clasping his hands together, he began to salute at the people all around and laughing with a smile that extended from ear to ear, he said, Thank you. Thank you for everybody's show of support for the magnificent Jewel Hall. This junior shall be grateful for this personal favor. Everyone, please, let the auction continue. Please feel free to bid casually and as much as you'd like. There is no need to be polite what kind of a despicable fellow is this kid. To see you lick the heels of the magnificent Jewel Hall and portray them as if they're the best kind of shopkeepers in the world, it is truly despicable to the extreme point. Everyone present was simply cursing him in their hearts. If supercilious thoughts could smash a person to death, then Jun M. O. Xie, currently would be bearing down on an earth-shattering amount of pressure and the end would be for him to simply die horribly. If despicable behavior could hurt, then Jun M. O. Xie would right now be filled with cuts and bruises. Finally that mysterious voice did not sound out again, when after some time another voice sounded out clearly, before, during the bidding process of the Blazing Heart Meridians, it has been deemed that the bid by Li Zhen is invalid, and the auction shall continue with the original price. Sure enough, it was two people. Jun M. O. Xie thought this and smiled in his heart. Surely there wasn't any unity and agreement on their views. Right, uh, dot then this person should still be a little strong eh? The complexion of the purple-robed man on the stage changed and then with frustration said, the Blazing Heart Meridian was previously bid on by Tang Yuan for 300,000 tails of silver. I had called out the price twice, is there anyone who is offering more than 300,000? Even after being asked repeatedly, no one ventured out a bid. Even disregarding the events that transpired earlier, who'd want to go offend Jun M. O. Xie whose grandpa was a Sky Xian expert and to add to that, the fearsome grandpa of Tang Yuan who doted on his grandson. Who would dare to get on the wrong side of these two young masters? 300,000 tails of silver, goes thrice. Sold. When the purple-robed man slammed the hammer down he was completely feeling oppressed. He had been managing and hosting auctions for over a decade and yet had never felt so depressed before. Because of two prodigal children of big families, the auction has become totally messed up. This item which could easily reach the price of 1 million tails of silver is being sold for merely 300,000. This price is almost akin to simply giving away the blazing heart meridian. 
Fatty Tang had experienced great joy, only to be saddened instantaneously and half of the time, he has not understood what really was going on. Jun M. O. Xie's disposition finally calmed down. The opportunity was almost about to slip away from his hand. Sitting across them, Dugu Xiaoyi cast an extremely angry look before saying, there is no justice here. That guy actually succeeded in obtaining at such a low price. It is truly repulsive. I hate it. Ah. While the words that were coming out seemed hateful, her two beautiful big eyes actually turned into two crescent moons and she seemed to laugh from the bottom of her heart and there wasn't the slightest hint of disgust contained in it. Princess Ling Meng looked suspiciously at Dugu Xiaoyi who was obviously in high spirits and suddenly looked over, skimming across she thought of Jun Mo Xia who this lady was always bullying. But, sitting in this room, she apparently did not have the usual look of disgust that she had in the past, but a look of appreciation. Seeing how things were progressing, Princess Ling Meng suddenly had a bizarre thought and couldn't help but exclaim in surprise, Xiaoyi, you. You dot did you take a fancy to this debauchee of a man? Hearing this, Xiaoyi's face became completely red as she wrinkled her nose and stuck out her tongue. Undoubtedly blushing, she said with resolution, who has? How can I take fancy to some prodigal son of a family? HMM.IT is just that this girl's meteorite iron was taken by him, his guts is real big. How can I forget this? This girl is just waiting for an opportunity to pay him back in full. As she was saying this, she lifted her eyebrow and clenching her jaws tightly. Princess Ling Meng from head to toe was feeling completely powerless as she heard these words. With all things said, Dugu Xiaoyi was a close precious friend of her for many years. How could she not see through her and was fully exposed? Xiaoyi was truly happy from unlike what her appearance seemed and the concern that she was showing, came from the bottom of her heart and this was something that any random observer could tell. Thinking again, she realized this Dugu Xiaoyi had been depressed and her mind was not in place. But, just as she heard Jun Mo Xie's voice, she suddenly seemed to become totally lively and bursting with energy. All of these were self-evident, and it could all only lead to one possibility. This possibility was so unthinkable that it simply was a nightmare. Ah dot younger sister Dugu Xiaoyi. She looked at Xiaoyi before continuing, are you trying to pull wool over your older sister's eyes? Ah. He is such a loiterer and a good-for-nothing brat, how could you approve of him? Dugu Xiaoyi blinked her big pretty eyes twice and happily hummed before saying, because he is such a debauchee, all he needs is a good lesson to let him know how powerful this girl is. Hum. Hum. He he he. As she finished saying this, she could not help laughing. Her eyes were full of longing, apparently already thinking about how she would teach Jun and Mo Xia a lesson and a fascinated look. Princess Ling Meng simply grew more worried about this issue. This is no trivial matter. Even though Dugu Xiaoyi had only herself to blame, we also had to inform her father, the magnificent General Dugu Wudi about this. The Dugu family is a peerless family in the capital, moreover, Dugu Xiaoyi is the sole beloved daughter of the family who is always doted upon by everyone. To compare her with the Jun family's dissolute and waste of a heir. A H that it would be akin to a lovely flower being stuck in a cow dung. The absurdity simply cannot be described. It would just be a simple wanton wastefulness of the nature's lovely products. To say of nothing else, just to think on behalf of the imperial family, the Jun family's third generation's only grandson and the granddaughter of the Dugu family, the result is simply terrifying. This would lead to complete change in the government and the public. So dot and oh, I must stop this. I must never let Dugu Xiaoyi fall in Jun Mo Xie's hands. Princess Ling Meng gave a complex look to Dugu Xiaoyi and secretly made the decision on Jun Mo Xie in her mind. Obtaining the Blazing Heart Meridian at a cheaper price, Jun Mo Xie was extremely excited from the bottom of his heart. He looked at himself and knew that such appearance of two masters at the magnificent Jewel Hall is rare and infrequent. My own personal strength is not strong enough. I just simply have to wait and be patient and have act as the Joker in the meantime. Eventually, 
Tang Yuan bought what was requested of of him by Grandpa Tang without a hitch. IT was a single scroll on the way of the sword. Jun Mo Xie simply cast a look at it and then expressed no interest in that martial book. He simply looked down upon Tang Yuan for having bought such a thing. This book which can be classified as only fancy fencing, they actually bid for it and even spent two million silver to acquire it. But then, Jun Mo Xie was suddenly startled and then his face showed a trace of surprise. After obtaining this blazing heart meridian, he had sent his spiritual sense out to cover the boxes of the two princes which had six people in them. But, he was surprised to find that at of this moment, both the boxes were completely empty. There was absolutely no one in them and none had walked out the door. It seemed as if they simply disappeared. However, Jun Mo Xie concluded that these six people did not leave the place. Is it that those two boxes have a secret underground passageway? The next moment, in fact, Jun Mo Xie managed to find a trace of the lingering spiritual energy in the air and traced it back into the crowds down below. What he saw down there surprised him greatly. They had changed their clothes and even the look of their faces. Even if someone managed to take a look at these men face to face, it would be hard for them to be able to recognize them. Three of them had gathered in the middle of the hall while the other three to the sides of the hall. They all had the appearance of wealthy men, who were just looking here and there but, Jun Mo Xie with his keen perception easily could make out a hint of anxiety and desire burning in their hearts. It simply indicated that the object that they desired was going to come up soon and they were waiting in much anticipation. But, among all the goods in this place, in the end what is it that has got these two groups totally enticed? Even two of the princes are involved. Jun Mo Xie took the auction list from Fatty Tang and started scouring the items that were mentioned. Finally after going through the list he managed to find out the item that had even bought the two princes to the auction house. 30 strips of tendons from a rank 6 Xian Beast. Xian Beast's tendons. It had to be this item. In addition, the rest of the stuff on the list was just something which can be considered as luxurious decorations and other small stuff, things that did not have too much of a practical use. Wouldn't they want something that would have a huge offensive power and could produce a threat to life? Seemingly on the Xian Beast's tendons would meet their requirements. But, what are they going to do with so many tendons? Do they have a reason to change to whips as their weapon of choice for their killers? Could it be e that it is going to be used for making particularly strong bows? Tn. A whip. Ha ha ha. As his thought progressed to this point, Jun Mo Xie's heart started beating really fast. If the tendons of a rank 6 Xian beast were used to create a bow, then the arrow if shot from such a bow would have its power increased by more than twice. However, though such a kind of bow and arrow would be incredibly powerful, the strength of a 9 Xian rank cultivator is insufficient and surely wouldn't be able to pull the string of the bow. But, because of this, if it were silver or gold level Xian rank experts, this type of weapon would undoubtedly become an absolute weapon. Even a Jade Xian rank expert might meet his end at the hands of such a Bao's user if he is caught in a moment of unawareness or surprise. And, a group consisting of more than 10 such Bao wielding users would surely have the power to even pose a threat to the lives of Sky Xian level masters. Truly, it's what they're thinking. Sure enough. Just as the Xian beast's tendon came out, the group belonging to the two princes immediately began to bid against each other and the situation was a fierce competition between the two factions. Prices continued to rise and before long it reached 5 million tails of silver which was an unprecedented height. At this price, surely the rest of the people in the hall would have simply been sent packing home, but even if these two were relatives, they refused to even concede half a step. After a long bidding process, the price of the 30 strips of Xian Beast's tendons actually climbed up to a sky-high price of 13 million tails of silver and was obtained by the killer group of one of the two emperor's sons. In the recent years, in all of the auctions that the magnificent Jewel Hall had organized, this can be considered as the single item with the highest price. Jun Mo Xie, see this is just the tendons of a rank 6 Xian Beast. 
If it were a demonic core of a rank 6 Shen beast, then I'm afraid, the price would have been even higher. Jun Emos yeah, now you must know that how much of an important thing was lost by my family. Tang Yuan snapped, it is simply priceless. Ah. Jun Emos yeah did not know whether to cry or laugh. He simply looked below with the intent to procure those Xian beasts' tendons. Once the auction finished, the crowd quickly dispersed and the three men who had obtained the tendons also mixed in with the crowd slowly moving away. Jun Emo Xia knew that in his family, the strongest was his grandpa who was a Sky Xian realm master, but he knew that even if it was his grandpa facing against people wielding these bows, his life would be in peril and he'd have to be very careful. Let's go. Jun Emo Xia stood up, his mind still wondering, if I'm able to trace it back or find out where they are going to keep it finally, it would be extremely ideal. Chapter 96, So Powerful You are listening at NovelFull.audio 96, So Powerful What a pity. Jun Emo Xia had some regret in his heart. After the last time, that old fellow had some urgent matters that he had to take care of and had left saying that he wouldn't return for another six months. If he was here, then his incredible tracking skills would surely have come in handy at this point of time. Jun Emo Xia looked over at this own guards. Firm and strong, these were the men that Grandpa Jun had himself selected personally. They had varying strengths of at the gold and silver Xian level and could be considered as quite good. In the Tian Xiang Imperial City at least it was sufficient for them to be able to protect Jun Emo Xia against all dangers and threats in broad daylight. When Jun Emo Xia would need them, they would be there ready to serve. But, Jun Emo Xia knew that it would make no sense to have him command these men to follow and track the movements of those killers. Even if these men managed to keep up with them and catch up to them, then only in a very short period of time, all there would be left would be eight corpses. According to Jun Emo Xia, each of the three men, had a cultivation at the pinnacle of the gold Xian realm and in addition to that, they were killers by profession. Threat once discovered, it must be wiped out and stopped at its very root. To allow the tiger to grow up and create a disaster would be an extremely foolish thing to do. In any case, there had to be a way to track these back. At least if I cannot get my hands on those Xian beasts' tendons, I should at the very least destroy them. After all the consequences of the weapons made out of them is extremely terrible. Jun Emo Xia with the thought of killing, involuntarily let out his spiritual sense which was filled with awe-inspiring killing intent. Just at this time, Jun Emo Xia suddenly felt an enormous spiritual pressure descend upon him cutting off his own spiritual sense. The goal of this pressure of extremely clear, it was Jun Emo Xia himself. Not only that, it was extremely accurate, even Tang Yuan who was at his side was not affected in the slightest manner. This imposing manner was much more formidable than the previous two mysterious characters. This extremely strong spiritual sense gave Jun Emo Xia a real surprise. This mysterious master from the magnificent Jewel Hall seems to be far stronger than my grandpa Jun. Is this actually the legendary divine Xian level master? Jun Emo Xia even managed to slightly guess the reason for this spiritual sense to come out. When those three killers had left the auction hall, he had his spiritual sense spread out wanting to track them down but then he let out a hint of killing intent which led to the change in the fluctuation of his spiritual sense. And, this little bit of feeble fluctuations, the slightest intention to kill, was immediately spotted by this mysterious master. Because of the special mysterious gas that he had, the experts bellow the divine Xian realm simply could not detect his spiritual sense. So, Jun Emo Xia simply used it without a second's thought and did not expect that this time he would be caught red-handed. The strength of this man hidden in the dark was completely evident and he did not expect for such an expert to be here. However, the magnificent Jewel Hall had always been concerned about its auctions and for Jun Emo Xia who had been tracking them, to have been found out is not surprising. Especially considering what kind of an expert this man was with such strong spiritual pressure. Jun Emo Xia was however sure that this man had only found out his spiritual sense and he couldn't identify that it had been him. 
That is because, to identify the spiritual sense, they had to be similar. But, Jun Mo Xie firmly believed that his art of unlocking heaven's fortune, in this world, was completely unique. So, he is confident that though his killing intent had been exposed, he had not yet exposed his identity. But, at this moment, Jun Mo Xie was clearly feeling a strong oppressive pressure bearing down on him and it was making it difficult for him to hold on. He thought, if I do not fight back, then I'm afraid that my own mind would be greatly affected. But, if I use my soul to fight back, though mine has my magical and mystical effects, his opponent's was far stronger than his. What could he do? While he was hesitating, the strong spiritual sense had already started to oppress his body and cover it completely. At the final moment, deep inside Jun Mo Xie's consciousness, the exquisite Hong Jun Pagoda suddenly started rotating at full speed and at the same time started emitting a multicolored radiant light and completely covered his soul. He could feel this new type of force slowly meet the one that was oppressing him. As the strong spiritual sense came crashing down on him, the light from the exquisite Hong Jun Pagoda met with it and it was akin to have a little snowflake falling on a red dot hot stove, the pressure was eliminated without a trace. It completely disappeared, not even the slightest trace of shockwaves were left. This ancient treasure, a relic, it was simply amazing with supernatural capabilities. Its blessing was even comparable to the energy of a divine Xian realm experts. I'm afraid even if all the powerful experts in this world came together, yet, for this exquisite Hongjun pagoda, to handle them would be an extremely simple and easy matter. The light from the exquisite Hongjun pagoda slowly rescinded back down. During this whole period of time, Jun Mo Xie had his eyes completely closed and was concentrating on his consciousness and soul. But, everything that occurred was only understood by Jun Mo Xie. Even the mysterious expert who had been counterattacked would have no clear idea on what had exactly happened. Within the magnificent jewel hall, in an underground chamber, there sat an old man cross-legged with his eyes completely closed. He suddenly shook his head and opened his eyes fiercely. One could see an incredible look in his eye and a trace of fear flashed past in his facial expression, even beads of sweat started to flow down his forehead. No matter what, he was an divine Xian realm expert. But, his spiritual sense when it had been oppressing someone, the other person without even the slightest of difficulty, simply and effortlessly resolved it. In comparison, it seemed as if his soul's power was just a speck of dust when compared to the other person. What did this show? Peak of Divine Xian Realm Only a person at the peak of the Divine Xian Realm would be able to receive my spiritual pressure with such ease and would be able to nullify it so quickly and effortlessly. It is the only possible way to explain this situation. The white-haired old man was completely stunned and blurted out, this dot how is there such a supreme figure in the Tian Xiang imperial city? Is it that something big is about to happen here? Jun Mo Xie A clear and crisp voice sounded from behind abruptly, and Jun Mo Xie turned to look and was surprised to find Duga Xiaoyi over there. She came over with a savage look plastered over her face and said, Ah.so you haven't dot ah. She was just about to say, you haven't died but couldn't bring herself to say it. The word died itself seemed morbid and she an extreme reluctance to add that word in the same sentence as describing Jun Mo Xie even when it was just in the context of a joke. So, it is Miss Duga Xiaoyi. Jun Mo Xie said smiling and looked up and down at her appearance before saying, I'm seeing you after many days. Miss Xiaoyi seems to have become all the more beautiful. IT is simply giving me a psychological itch. Tang Yuan who was standing on one side was totally taken by surprise. He could not help but turn and stare at Jun Mo Xie. My ancestor. Jun Mo Xie, how is it that your guts grew so much that you even dare to take liberties with this angry little sister? Is it that all the beatings that you received previously are not enough? In Jun Mo Xie's heart, even his grandpa, his who was a Sky Xian realm master and an expert at fighting only held a second place in his heart, but his sister Dot in Dot Law was the one who truly held the most cherished position in his heart. This was something that Tang Yuan knew very clearly. 
However, a series of events that happened next, let Fatty Tang to believe that he was yet dreaming and had not woken up yet. After listening to the words of Jun M. O. Xie, Dugu Xiaoyi actually was surprised and not angry, but, also slightly blushed. Her fierce expression completely disappeared and she started blushing and lowered her head while whispering, Really? Do I really look better than before? I look at myself every day in the mirror and I do not think so. What? Tang Yuan let out a groan and felt his mind crumbling down, ah dot hell it is broad daylight. Is the person in front of me not Dugu Xiaoyi but, her twin sister or something? Jun Mo Xia also started to sweat a bit and suddenly felt a bit creeped out. This sister today, what has gotten into her? Nodding slowly he said, yes, yes. It has dropped. Definitely dropped, build, it must be effective then, to lose weight. Then I'll go home and continue to lose weight. Dugu Xiaoyi said excitedly as she was jumping about, and then suddenly stopped as she remembered something ADN then started at Jun Mo Xia with those beautiful eyes viciously before saying, Jun Mo Xia. What did you say a moment ago? You dare make fun of me slyly. Your head has sure got muddled. You've really got bold. Jun Mo Xia was more and more sure that something was wrong with this girl today and she was totally not acting like her usual self. Just then, from Dugu Xiaoyi's bosom, a small snow white head stuck out. It had small eyes, small ears, a small nose and a lovely small pink tongue which it was wagging and completely wet. It also had small little paws which it was flailing about and trying to grasp at something with small nails at its ends. It was a really cute small little animal. A Xian beast. Oh my god. Tang Yuan screamed and then staring at it he said, an iron panther's cub. Chapter 97, A Xian Beast You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 97 A Xian Beast Iron-winged panther, a high-grade Xian beast with the potential to reach rank 7 upon reaching adulthood. It could crush iron with its legs, had an excellent movement speed and had an extremely high level of intelligence. A fully grown iron winged panther had enough strength to be a worthy opponent to a Sky Xian realm expert. This iron winged panther was a high level beast which had a formidable strength was enough to rival a normal rank 8 Xian beast. Such a high leveled Xian beast's cub was really hard to find and Jun Mo Xia never thought that Dugu Xiaoyi would actually be in possession of one. But, looking at its barely a foot long body, it was obvious that it was a newborn cub of an iron-winged panther. The Dugu family was really a big and strong family. To have such a scarce thing being given out as a pet to their beloved daughter. And now, this little iron-winged panther cub was trying to climb out of Dugu Xiaoyi's arms and was struggling to get out. A pair of dark eyes looked at Jun Mo Xia, unexpectedly with the look of desire. Be good little white, do not struggle. Sister here will feed you great food. Dugu Xiaoyi was greatly surprised. This little thing was obtained by her father through great efforts, three days ago. However, because of being separated from its mother, the panther simply just grew weaker. It did not love and always simply rested in her arms without so much as moving about. But, how did it have such a huge reaction suddenly to the point of wanting to leave the comfort of her arms? So, he is called Little White Air. Jun Mo Xie took one look, smiled and appraised, what a cute little guy, Jun Mo Xie did not particularly love this little beast. The words spoken from his mouth were simply to maintain pretenses and lacked complete interest. What he wanted to do was to find the whereabouts of those their mysterious killers and their base of operations and hideout. As he turned to see, that little iron-winged panther abruptly started to shout, Gur. Gur, it was extremely anxious and struggling unbearably. It kept trying to break free from Dugu Xiaoyi's hold, struggling outward, its four pink paws scratching with all its effort to reach out in the direction of Jun Mo Xia, the Jun family's young master. This little guy seems to like you. Dugu Xiaoyi stood there staring with her big round eyes a little shocked. Since they received this little iron-winged panther cub, 
all it did was to eat and drink itself to sleep and she had not seen it behave in an affectionate manner with anyone. Today, it was the first time that it had met June Emosia, how was it so affectionate? It was strange indeed. But I do not like it all. June Emosia frowned and squinted and partly looked at the Sodot called Rank 7 High Leveled Xian Beast, but unfortunately shook his head. But unfortunately, this little one is too small. Even if its size doubled, it would be barely enough to stew only a single pot. Ah! Duga Xiaoyi snorted, the way Jun Mo Xia was speaking was something that she did not quite like. She hesitated for a moment, only to see that this little white had an extreme desire to go to him. Finally she couldn't bear it and holding the tiny body of the cub she went before Jun Mo Xia and begged, well, little white really likes you. You hold it for a while now and coax it to make it happy. In return, I'll forgive you about you commenting on my weight previously. As the separation between June Mo Xia and the cub became lesser, that little iron-winged panther cub looked even more excited and its mouth completely open, it was whining with happiness. It held out its soft and tender paws towards June Mo Xia like how a baby would hold out its arms for an adult to pick it up. Its eyes held a complete look of longing and joy. Hesitating for a moment, Jun Mo Xia sighed in his heart. With such an interruption, he wouldn't be able to track the three killers but there was no way out of this. He reluctantly stretched out his hand and took the cub over. As the panther got into Jun Mo Xia's arm, it gave out a very satisfied expression and stretched its legs like a king and stared around sleepily. It greedily took a few breaths of the air around June Mo Xia and issued an extremely satisfied growl with its pink tongue showing. It snuggled its head along June Mo Xia's arm and acted as if his chest was a lovely pillow and actually went straight to sleep. Looking at its behavior here, it seemed to have made a long-term plan to live over here. Dugu Xiaoyi who was on the side stared at June Mo Xia wide-eyed with her big pretty eyes. This dot this dot how is this possible? Little White, though small, when taken by the Dugu family, it was handed over to me and had almost recognized me as its master, even though its specific trainer had not been recognized. Hence, it had not even bothered to give a second glance to others and Dugu Xiaoyi was the only one it would be ready to be with without any exception. How is it that it meet Jun Mo Xia for the first time today and yet is so close? This is simply too weird, right? In fact, even Jun Mo Xia found this matter to be extremely puzzling and thought that there was more to this matter than that met the eye. However, he looked helpless at the little guy who had surely made his long-term plan to stay at this new new home that he had found and then said smilingly, isn't it that a Xian beast will recognize only one master during its lifetime and would be incomparably faithful? A rank 7 high-leveled Xian beast. How can it be comparable to a common household puppy that is so easy to abduct? Implausible rumors are. Doug Xiaoyi blushed and felt a great sense of loss of face. She angrily stepped forward with the intent of wrenching away the little guy from the hands of Jun Mo Xia. Jun Mo Xia, this guy is simply outrageous. I do not mind about the earlier fat thing, but he won as far as to make me feel ashamed to leave. Spiteful. Ah. But. An even more unbelievable thing happened. The little guy seeing Duga Xiaoyi stretch her arms to pick him up, actually suddenly stared at her, his eyes full of hostility, the mouth growling repeatedly. Even though it had not grown many teeth, it opened its mouth and showed a ferocious expression trying to intimidate her, while his tender little paws tightly grasped onto Jun Mo Xie's short and actually refused to leave the stranger that it had met of the first time. Dugu Xiaoyi cringed onto its body and tried to pull it away. Little White's four little paws were tightly fixed onto Jun Mo Xie's body. Even his clothes tore a bit but it was holding onto him and shouting out loudly as it was being parted away from Jun Mo Xie, one could easily see its extreme reluctance. Dugu Xiaoyi scratched her hair and looked shocked at Jun Mo Xie when suddenly a sentence came to her head which she involuntarily blurted out, Jun Mo Xie, are you his mom? Jun Mo Xie suddenly started sweating, his forehead covered with black lines. What kind of a darn sentence is this? I'm its mom. 
would I not be a beast then? Not to mention Duga Xiaoyi and Tang Yuan who did not know what happened, even Jun Mo Xie himself wasn't exactly sure, in fact the point was that, Jun Mo Xie was the master of the exquisite Hongjun Pagoda, and the qi that had transformed his body was not exactly of the normal kind, coupled with the fact that he was practicing the art of unlocking heaven's fortune which had marvelous effects. Jun Mo Xie's body was far better than what anyone could imagine, and between heaven and earth, it was filled with the purest essence of qi. These pure worldly qi, for ordinary people and xian beasts, it would generally go unnoticed, but for these high-leveled xian beasts, it was one of the most important things that they needed the most to grow. Especially for this young hai and xian beast, it would be the most fatal irresistible temptation. After the great when the little guy was finally picked off from Jun Mo Xie, in his torn clothes, there actually was a big hole. Jun Mo Xie simply ignored the little guy's anxious growling, and brushed his clothes off before throwing it into Duga Xiaoyi's arms. Here it is, back to you. I'll give ten million to you, just to hold him properly. Duga Xiaoyi hurried to catch it carefully and then rebuked him angrily, can you not handle him gently? What are you going to if he falls down? Duga Xiaoyi held the little guy in her arms, while he was squeaking with anxiety and was struggling to get out of her grasp like his life was won the line. He kept looking towards Jun Mo Xie and even managed to improvise, his eyes actually became wet and tears seemed to roll out of his eyes. He even gave a look filled with resentment to Duga Xiaoyi. Duga Xiaoyi seeing this, her heart softened a bit and she felt that it was necessary to send the little guy over for some time again. Jun Mo Xie was shocked at seeing this, he hopped out of the way and stood far off, and embarrassedly said, I'm getting late. I shall leave first. He then shamelessly turned away. Duga Xiaoyi bitterly stamped her foot down and muttered a few words in anger. She suddenly turned to face the little guy in her arms before rebuking him, I blame you. How are you so good for nothing, acting as if he is your mom or dad? The iron-winged panther opened its eyes and looked with an innocent face at her. He suddenly hung his head down and looked as if it faced a bug loss as Jun Mo Xie left. Its mouth issued a whining sound as it rubbed itself listlessly against her arms, and the little happiness that he had shown was completely gone. Well, well, at most only a few days and I'll take you to him to play, Duga Xiaoyi finally said this to cajole the little cub. The little cub's development was still far from having the ability to understand human tongue and could naturally not understand what she was saying. Hence there was absolutely no response from it. But, Duga Xiaoyi herself, as she uttered these words, she was thinking to herself. But, at this, her heart was suddenly feeling a hint of joy, then there was another burst of embarrassment and was not sure why that happened. Ha! Huh. Princess Ling Meng she obviously came out together with me, how did she suddenly disappear? Dugu Xiaoyi found that her sister had actually gone somewhere. She wrinkled her nose and was greatly surprised as she complained, not letting me know and go, really dot this is too much. Jun Mo Xie with his guards, bid farewell to Tang Yuan and proceeded to walk away in the direction of the king's house. He turned at the intersection but found himself to be facing a big sedan chair which was parked quietly over there. It was surrounded by numerous strong figures and was much powerful than the previous lineup. Standing in the front of all this was a lonely desolate figure, Yi Gu Han. Princess Ling Meng was here, waiting for him. So, it is Ling Meng, Her Royal Highness in person. Even when we do not want to meet, it seems that we are predestined to meet in this life. Jun Mo Xie was surprised and raised his eyebrows as he said these words. Listening to his glib rhetoric words, she could not help but frown. Jun Mo Xie, I actually came to find you for something serious. Princess Ling Meng slowly came out of the sedan chair. Her face was cold, and her slender eyebrows raised in disgust, and refused to look in a thousand miles radius of this despicable fellow. I found you for something serious. You even find me for something worthless. You actually have the face to see me in this fashion and ask for something. Jun Mo Xie was sneering and enraged in his heart, 
but he put on a smiling face before saying, Ah. Dot, although the princess told it is a serious thing, even if it wasn't, I will do my best. A H did I ask it that the princess finally is going begin responding to my infatuation and going to ask me to be my consort. Really, it seems that the heaven pities me and grants me things that I'd want, God is really great, he blurted out a string of nonsense. Yi Gu Han's voice filled with killing intent sounded, bold. You dare utter such nonsense. Really presumptuous. Bold, daring and presumptuous. Jun Mo Xie shouted back, how dare you interrupt and this young master is talking with this princess when she told that she has serious business that needs to be spoken, who are you to butt in? Jun Mo Xie of course did not put Yi Gu Han in his eyes. He had not left much of an impression on him. It was not because of anything else, but because of how he had praised that killer with the words, real man, on that particular day. Jun Mo Xie felt to use such words to describe that man was a useless thing and felt nothing but despised towards Yi Gu Han. Listening to Jun Mo Xie talk like this in a seemingly dignified manner, Yi Gu Han was about to burst into flames of fury and was about to go on a rampage and kill this brat. Chapter 98 Do Not Be Shameless to This Extent You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translated by Mo TL Note this site is still a work in progress but here's the first chapter release. Enjoy. Chapter 98 Do not be shameless to this extent. Uncle Yi, please calm down. Princess Ling Meng hurriedly coaxed. When Jun Mo Xie was previously injured, Grandfather Jun had already caused a bloodbath in the capital. If he were killed by Yi Gu Han that the consequences would be too ghastly to consider. Although Yi Gu Han is a Sky Xian expert, he would still just be a piece of cake to Jun Zhan Tian even if Yi Gu Han's strength were to increase by one fold and fight with his full force. In any case, to lose his life just for a young debauchee is not worth it. Princess Ling Ming took two steps forward and asked Jun Mo Xie, Jun Mo Xie, please follow me over to the side. I have something important to tell you. Yi Gu Han closely followed behind her like a shadow, not leaving for even a moment. He apparently did not trust Jun Mo Xie. It was at this moment that Jun Mo Xie suddenly sensed a familiar chill in his heart rise and then quickly disappeared. This was the same killing intent that locked onto Jun Mo Xie in the magnificent jewel hall. Jun Mo Xie then contemplated in his heart. But why are they here? They did not leave after obtaining the Xian beast tendons. Don't tell me they want to assassinate the princess in broad daylight. Anyhow, the killing intent of three assassins could be clearly detected coming from around the street corner. And contrary to expectations, Jun Mo Xie had a feeling of seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. After having been delayed twice, he was certain that he would not be able to catch up to those three. He certainly did not expect that he would accidentally bump heads with them again so soon. This truly must be fate. He looked at the several bodyguards behind him. If these men followed along, not to mention tracking others, perhaps they would be discovered before they can even be able to take two steps. After giving it some thought, an idea slowly begins to develop in Jun Mo Xie's mind. Although Jun Mo Xie does not know why these killers ended up here, it's clear that the other party had not moved a step after discovering Princess Ling Meng's entourage. There is no doubt about it. The reason they paused was because they detected Yi Gu Han's formidable Sky Xian presence and so did not dare to act rashly. You wait here first. The princess and I have important matters to discuss. Jun Mo Xie explained while looking at his bodyguards with a serious face. The princess and I still have to exchange caresses and whisper some affectionate words. Don't disturb our serious business. Hearing these truly shameless words, the leader of the bodyguards was gaping and speechless while he stared at him. Eventually, he bows his head in consent. Why dot yes, young master? Just three short words had almost caused him to stutter three times. The leader was secretly cursing in his heart. You caressing and whispering sweet love with the princess. Young master, you truly are thick-skinned. 
Look at how the royal princess is glaring at you with those chilling eyes as if she want to freeze you to death. I'm afraid the truth is that you are going to suffer masochistic abuse but don't want us to witness your humiliation. We also have better things to do so why would we even want to follow you this time? Something serious. Do you dare to say that you have done even one serious thing since you born up until now? Jun Mo Xie walked forward with Princess Ling Ming. In his mind, he sensed that just as his retinue of bodyguards moved forward, the three assassins across the street had begun to move as well. By the time Jun Mo Xie had turned the street corner, the three assassins had already preceded a few dozen Zhangs down the street. But it seems that this just so happened to be their destination since it didn't appear as if they had any intention of leaving. By now, Yi Gu Han had already detected their presence as well, and he held in a frown. Although he was not aware that the other party were assassins, it is apparent from the spiritual power fluctuations that the other party had a high level of Xian cultivation. Even though he doesn't know their intentions, he had already placed his right hand upon his sword hilt. If they have any sudden movements, Yi Gu Han will immediately exterminate these three men. Concerning the safety of Princess Ling Ming, Yi Gu Han will never allow any accident to happen. A Sky Xian level existence can act with impunity in a place like Tianxiang City. Jun Mo Xie, I have a warning for you. Princess Ling Ming's charming figure finally came to a stop. She knitted her brows, apparently organizing her thoughts as she seems to have a bit of a difficulty broaching this subject. Royal Princess please speak frankly. I'm all ears. Jun Mu Xie's back has moved against the wall, with one leg bent such that his feet prop up against the wall. After raising one arm, lowering the other, and then tilting his head, he gazed at Princess Ling Ming. A truly a sloppy, frivolous, indecent and despicable appearance. Yi Gu Han could not stand looking at him like this, the spitting image of a street bum, and snorted before turning away. He would rather not look at this eyesore's shameful display. In his heart, he pitied Jun Zhan Tian, a hero of a generation, for having such a good for nothing as his sole heir. Truly regrettable. It seems that the Jun family's decline is already a matter of certainty. How unfortunate for a family that has sacrificed so much for their country. Jun Mo Xie gave the same snort of despise in his heart. You're supposed to be a Sky Xian expert, but compared to with me, your big brother, you are too inexperienced actually to be lacking even the minimum level of vigilance. Even though this young master appearance resembled a street bum or a dog taking a piss, but this leg being propped up against the wall can let me react appropriately to sudden changes and push off at any time. With the slightest exertion, no matter from which direction, from the sky or down below, I can still secure a path of retreat for myself. With each arm raised and lowered, it is a lot easier to maintain my balance which would be advantageous under any circumstance. Even if a supreme divine Xian expert were to appear in front of me right now and wanted to kill me, I'm confident I can still escape so long as I can push off against the wall with my leg. But look at you, a Sky Xian expert who did not understand that form followed function and turned away earlier. If this young master had the mind to take the life of this daydreaming little girl, that split second would have been more than enough to kill her three times over. What a moron. And to think this bodyguard believed that he's responsible and diligent, truly tragic and laughable. Jun Mo Xie, Lady Dugu is my closest and best friend, and so. Princess Ling Ming paused and bit her lips, feeling a little embarrassed. But the thought that Dugu Xiaoyi's lifelong happiness was currently in the hands of this frivolous debauchee in front of her, she gained her resolve and blurted out in one breath. And so, I don't want you to harass Xiao Yi again in the future. Too much flirting, you don't understand what I mean. Jun Mo Xie does not understand. Jun Mo Xie shook his head as if startled and started sweating profusely. This lowly debauchee does not have your royal princess profound knowledge, therefore, the words princess spoke is too difficult to understand. Forgive this one's ignorance. Might I suggest your royal princess make your words as clear and direct as possible? Jun Mo Xie was speaking the truth and was not just playing dumb. 
If he were the original June M. O. Sia, he would have immediately understood. But having never been in a relationship in his previous life, he had not realized Dugu Xiaoyi's feelings for him until now. He had already been in a chronic state of depression as it is from having to constantly avoid that bipolar and unruly female. Hearing what Princess Ling Ming said about this taboo subject was like hearing news from hell. June Mo Xie. There's no point in acting stupid. Do you really not understand what I'm saying? Princess Ling Ming frowned and felt annoyed in her heart. It doesn't matter if you don't get it, but you are not good enough for Xiao Yi. All I want today is for you to promise never to bother Xiao Yi again so as not to invite trouble. Ha <laughs> ha. Jun Mo Xie laughed out once before narrowing his eyes and asked, Isn't your royal princess stepping out of line? Are you her mother? Then with an O oh, sound, his face lit up as if in sudden realization before a strange smile emerged. So you were jealous. Waha. You. Princess Ling Ming's delicate frame suddenly trembled in anger, and her lips were quivering uncontrollably. Jun Mo Xie's words were simply a malicious mockery to an unmarried woman, not to mention that the person involved is a royal princess. Woman, let's first make things clear. Just exactly who is harassing who? Understand. F asterisk asterisk K your mother. Wait until you have properly investigated the truth before you start mouthing off, understand. A princess of a kingdom does not even understand such simple logic. No wonder other people say you have big boobs but no brain, even though your chest is small. Jun Mo Xia extended his hands out and began fondling the air with an evil grin. He gave a little sigh and said, unexpectedly same as poached egg and also brainless. What's wrong with you? Jun Mo Xie couldn't care less about her identity as a princess. What royalty? There is no difference between a princess and a daughter of a notable family in his heart, not to mention that Princess Ling Ming's demands have already aroused his enmity. Avoiding that little girl is one thing, but ordering him to avoid that little girl is another. He opposed the royal princess as a matter of principle. This was also a sore subject for young Master Jun to begin with so he wasn't in a good mood at the moment. If it were not for his apprehension about those assassins leaving, he would have long taken down Princess Ling Ming. Do the way I, your father, handle business need the input of a little girl like you. Whatever I do, I will never be soft-hearted toward women. Princess Ling Ming exhaled deeply and glared at him with two bone-dot-chilling eyes. Jun Mo Xie, if you remain so stubborn, do not blame me when I inform this matter to Great General Dugu Wu Di, you should know better than me what will happen at that time. Even Grandpa Jun may not be able to protect you. It will not be pretty for anyone. You are scaring me. I'm so afraid. Jun Mo Xie's face showed fear as his voice trembled, patting his chest in very exaggerated movements. My heart is thumping and thumping. His expression suddenly changed as he urged, you should quickly go and tell him. Leave quickly now. When the evening arrives, he he, you know a man will have urges in that particular region of his body. This master is not a lady like you who must act with propriety. You should hurry up and go. I have to thank your royal princess. Ha <laughs> ha. Jun Mo Xie did not hold back his words. Thinking to himself, I, your father, request that you leave quickly. It will be for the best if this leads to Dugu Xiao Yi being grounded indefinitely by her father. If that were to happen, then I'd really need to thank you. Good. Very good. Jun Mo Xie. Words are like the wind, so you better not regret when the time comes. Princess Ling Ming's tender figure trembled with anger, and her charming face paled. She had her heart in the right place when she gave her warning, first in consideration for Dugu Xiao Yi, which incidentally also benefited Jun Mo Xie. In case this actually causes an incident, the Dugu family really will not fear Jun Zhan Tian. If Jun Mo Xie really did something unforgivable, a situation where Dugu Wu Di will apprehend and execute Jun Mo Xie could actually happen. 
If she means to go through with this, then the Jun family and Dugu family will inevitably become mortal enemies. And with two big military clans at war with one another, the whole Tianxiang kingdom will become scatter ashes and dispersed smoke. The two would not be agreeable and parted on bad terms. As if it was planned, both individuals sported the same sneer on their faces. Jun Mo Xie turned his head away to the side and muttered to himself. I really ate my fill to the point of bursting. Brain dead people everywhere. She's not even my wife, and she wants to control my dating habits. What gives you the right to stick your nose into other people's business? Princess Ling Ming's lungs were about to burst with rage, her two beautiful eyes in a death stare, and her chest violently heaved up and down. He almost made her vomit blood. Not saying another word, she turned around and left. Walking away, she ferociously stamped her little feet making thumping sounds, seemingly wanting to bore through the ground beneath her feet. If she stays here any longer, only God knows if she will go insane from her anger. It was truly difficult to understand why Dugo Xiaoyi's heart is unexpected moved by this kind of despicable, shameless, vile, filthy, lowly reprobate of a person. The pale dot-faced Yi Gu Han arrived in front of Jun Mo Xia and coldly said. You're the same as trash. I usually disdain using force, but you are too abominable, today, I will act on behalf of Grandpa Jun and teach you a lesson. I'll make you understand there are people you cannot afford to offend. He had overheard their conversation earlier and had already been at his wit's end. It could already be considered an extraordinary accomplishment to be able to endure until now. Ju Mo Xie curled his lips and sneered. Pa. Who the hell are you? You open your mouth and somehow can represent one of the foremost officials, the Grand Duke of the Kingdom. Truly too ridiculous. His heart filled with disdain. Jun Mo Xie already regarded people who talk big before fighting as the definition of an idiot. And considering the fact that there is still killers on the loose, this became even more inexcusable. Both of Yi Gu Han's eyes instantly shot open as an azure blue radiance issue forth. His raised hand was about to descend. He finally understood Princess Ling Ming's frustration just now and decided this kid is in need of a spanking. A Sky Xian expert is beating someone. Sky Xian expert Yi Gu Han is bullying someone. Come quickly, come and see a Sky Xian expert beating up a person who is so weak he can't even truss up a chicken. Help. Yi Gu Han's palm haven't even moved when Jun Mo Xia already shouted out extremely sharp words in a loud and clear voice. He did not want to lose. As the saying goes, as wise man knows better than to fight when the odds are against him. Yi Gu Han's deathly pale complexion that hasn't changed in ten years instantly flushed a deep shade of red. Too shameless. Truly too shameless. For a person to be so shameless to this extent, it really makes one's hair stand up in anger. You. Yi Gu Han's raised hand trembled as he pointed at Jun Mo Xia in anger. This Sky Xian expert simply cannot imagine this situation. After a long time, Yi Gu Han finally choked out a sentence to Jun Mo Xia, do not be shameless to this extent. Chapter 99, Tracking. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Translated by Mo TL Note. The website is dot .functional. Anyways, thanks for all the kind words. I couldn't reply to all your comments individually. But yes, I will probably look for editors slash proofreaders in the future. I'm just carrying the torch. I'm only translating this project because no one else seems to be interested. I understand that the speed of chapter releases may be too slow for some, but 2.3 chapters are better than no chapters at all. I don't plan on dropping the series, but I'm not making any claims of the translating rights either. If others feel that they can do a better job and wants to translate the series, just let me know, and they can take over this project. In the meantime, I can only promise to do my best. Chapter 99 Tracking Princess Ling Ming called out from a distance. Uncle Yi. Ignore him. Let's leave. 
Yi Gu Han was so angry that he very nearly went off on that devil child right then and there. He disappeared before Jun Mo Xie's eyes with a swish sound and secretly decided in his heart. Although this brat Xian Qi is garbage and his martial arts are mediocre, his poisonous mouth truly is first under the heavens. I better not run into him in the future. If a day comes when he angers me to death, then I'll certainly set a record in the Xian Xian continent as the first Sky Xian expert to be angered to death by a debauchee. In that brief period, he hadn't even fight not to mention getting injured, yet his chi churned, and he want to vomit blood. He has never experienced something like this in his life. Even the backlash from when his martial arts cultivation went astray hadn't been this grave. I, your father, will be damned if I didn't anger you to death. But I still have to thank you for solving my problem. Jun Mo Xie snorted and watched Princess Ling Ming and Yi Gu Han leave while spouting smoke through their seven orifices. After checking both ends of the empty street, he gave a curious laugh and pushed off with his left foot, leaping up on top of the walls with a swish and disappearing with the blink of an eye. Princess Ling Ming climbed straight onto the sedan chair. Her body was still trembling from head to toe, her sight shrouded in darkness, her lungs venting vehemently and her heart practically exploding out of her chest. The maids to her side were frightened out of their minds, continuously patting the princess' chest and massaging her back in an attempt to relieve her anger. The maids took the better part of the day to calm her down and felt as if they had just come back from waging war. This is the first time in Princess Ling Ming's life that she had been angered to this extent, so much so that she had an urge to dismember Jun Mo Xie's body into 10,000 pieces. Head to the Dugu residence. Princess Ling Ming commanded. Yi Gu Han's face became black, then pale, then red, before changed back to black. It was like this person was putting on a face-changing performance, but the only regret is that there were no alternatives to red, black, and white color. If there were a few more colors, then he would be worthy of being a face-changing grand master. The anger rising in his body gave him the urge to destroy everything. Both eyes looked straight ahead like an erupting volcano. The eight June family bodyguards were sweating profusely as they watched him, their hearts filled with anxiety. How come the princess and this person have come back but our family's young master still has not returned? Did our young master not shout out just now? This person wouldn't have beaten our young master senseless right. Even though Yi Gu Han's fury was palpable and the bodyguards were aware that this was a dangerous time to provoke him, their sense of responsibility to protect the young master still prevailed in the end. Finally plucking up the courage, one of the guards opened his mouth and asked. This distinguished lord. Do you know my family's young master? Get lost. Both of Yi Gu Han's eyes became blood red. His long, gray hair rose up as if to pierce the sky. His furious bellow was drawn dot out and full of power, causing the heavens and earth to quake. The color drained from everyone's faces, their heart wildly beating as they were shaken to the point of almost falling over. This was the absolute strength of a peak sky Xian expert. All the pent dot up anger in his heart finally poured out like torrential rain. If he had not vented out his anger just now, he was afraid that he might have suffered from internal injuries. The shout shocked the entire city. Countless experts in the capital instantly became alert as they soared up into the sky to hover over the capital. Everyone was curious. An expert that can issue forth a voice this imposing is at the very least a peak earth Xian expert. What could cause this expert to become so infuriated? Everyone can tell from the fury in his voice that he wanted to burn down heaven and earth. By a small tavern doorway, Old Song suddenly widened his turbid old eyes in astonishment. How come I can hear little Ye's voice? Watching as Yi Gu Han and Princess Ling Ming's sedan chair leave, the Jun family bodyguards hurried into the alley to find it empty, not even a shadow of their young master could be seen. The guards couldn't help but cry out bitterly to the heavens over their rotten fate. The young master has not only been killed in this old and dirty alley, but even his corpse had also been completely obliterated. Jun Mo Xie appeared from the hidden depths of the shadows, rushing through the alley, 
his spiritual senses already spread out so as to closely match the swift speed of the black-clothed assassins. Jun Xie's hands ceaselessly moved and, before he had even advanced one Zhang, his face completely transformed into that of another person. He now resembles a man in his mid-thirties, and his hair was slightly disheveled. This ordinary appearance could be found everywhere in the capital and would be difficult to identify this person in a crowd. Jun Xie flew out onto the main street after several twists and turns, his feet under him seem as though they were moving in slow motion but was actually quite fast. After passing through a clothing store, his speed had not slowed down in the slightest but his moon-white gown had changed into navy blue commoner garment. The owner of the shop was now unconscious, still sporting the same ear-to-ear -ear grin to welcome customers. The assassins ahead were obviously very cautious. After changing directions and taking multiple detours, each and every one had already changed their appearances to that of ordinary merchants and peddlers. They were neither fast nor slow as they traveled eastward, talking while walking, occasionally letting out fits of laughter as if sharing a very enjoyable conversation. Vulgar expressions were seen on their three faces, appearing to other people as if they were having perverse thoughts about women, like a stereotypical patron of brothels. This assassin group's level is not simple. Jun Xie sighed in his heart. It is true that in his past life, such disguises were clearly understood by assassins. But now there are three people in this world can do it so naturally, so it's clear that the training is quite well established. What is even more impressive is that the three had concealed killing intent such that not one bit can leak out. This place really has superior talent. If not for his spiritual sense being able to detect the cold Ean aura from the other party, they would almost certainly be impossible to track. In other words, there is no one else that can use this tracking method apart from him. It was in this way, going around in circles as if chasing a teapot asterisk, that faint sounds of water were soon heard from up ahead, accompanied by the melodious sounds of a string instrument and the voices of women singing. After the fragrance of a woman's cosmetic had become more and more concentrated, the assassin's destination became readily apparent. Asterisk this is a metaphor for the teapots typically being kept on rotating trays called Lazy Susans at the center of tables in Chinese restaurants. If you wanted to pick up the teapot while others are rotating the tray, then you'd be chasing the teapot. Spirit Fog Lake Dot Jun Mo Xie finally understood why these people had to pass through that particular street, it was the only road that leads directly to the Spirit Fog Lake. Any other route would inevitably lead to a long detour around the lake. But if he wants to change his appearance, then he would rather take this detour several more times. He will almost certainly not be caught. And along the way, Jun Mo Xie already changed his clothes three times and even transformed his height and body type three times. Tianxiang City's Spirit Fog Lake is the heaven for all men. There are heavenly beauties here of all shapes and sizes. As long as you can imagine it, you will certainly find it here. Patrons could wantonly enter one of the many pavilions or step foot on a merrily dot decorated pleasure boat. Whatever you can think of you can try. Whatever you desire you can do. As long as you have enough money, you can do as you please without any worries. But if you don't have money, then that you'd better just leave. Even old and even older escorts as fat as Tang Yuan will not spare you a look. This world naturally has their fair share of fairy tales. Gifted scholars and beautiful maidens asterisk, escorts falling in love, vows of marriage without parents' approval, how love will find a way, and so on. But a fairy tale, after all, is only a fairy tale. Asterisk ideal pair of lovers equals brains and beauty, fairy tales always have happy endings, but unfortunately, life can be very cruel. Many poor and vain scholars, who thought in themselves that they were handsome and talented, had put on a distinguished intellectual appearance to come here in an attempt to create their own fairy tale story. They had anticipated that a divine beauty would fall in love with them at first sight, and how their charm and talent would allow them to live on the earnings of these escorts. Unfortunately, they had all been heartlessly thrown out in succession after only being able to fish out a pittance of copper coins from their pockets. 
some were even thrown into the spirit fog lake and were drowned half to death. Their misfortune reminded them that fairy tales are certainly appealing, but without enough money in their pocket, you will just throw your life away and die in a stupid, meaningless and shameful manner. Think about what kind of place a local brothel is. Escorts don't talk about love and courtesans only talk of nonsense. And a brothel is a place that is filled with the former. What man would visit this kind of establishment and agree to remain chaste if his wife is not in the room? Pretending to have pure intentions at a brothel is like giving the escorts a certificate of achievement star. How detestable and patronizing. Asterisk I wasn't really sure how to translate this. Is a placard that's traditionally bestowed upon wives who have worked tirelessly work to upkeep their home and raise the children while their husbands are away at work. Giving an escort such an award is like a slap in the face. For the women who've been accustomed to seeing the very worst in people, how could they not see through the half dot asked scholarly and cultured pretenses for what it really is? There are very few good men like in the fairy tales. No wonder Tang Yuan once said that bastards were cleanly killed with one sword stroke, but hypocrites were continuously tormented and tortured until they collapsed from a mental breakdown. He always kept these words close to heart. Jun Mo Xie concealed himself among the shadows, sticking to the walls and hiding behind trees. His body seemed as though it possessed an almost intangible and elusive quality and was able to become one with anything he used as cover. Not one passerby along the way noticed his presence, not to mention the three assassins he is following. But looking at the three men in front, dominated their thoughts, but they kept up a perfect gentleman's appearance. These nouveau riches entered a luxurious building in the outer reaches of Spirit Fog Lake, N.I. Chang Pavilion. After the party went in, a nearby pleasure boat begins to slowly row over before coming to a stop in the waters near the N.I. Chang Pavilion. Jun Mo Xie was stunned by what he saw. Apart from the helmsman outside, there was surprisingly no one else on the boat. It seemed as if it's just waiting for him. This situation seemed a little odd. What's more, the people that have since gone on board have stayed on the other side of the boat. Isn't this too good to be true? Jun Mo Xie gritted his teeth. Let's take a gamble. A sudden gust of wind rose up. Amidst a clump of reed, a piece of reed broke loose before gently drifting away on the surface of the lake. A hint of dream-like quality accompanied the arrival of the setting sun, forming an uncanny scenery. Jun Mo Xie planned to exploit these drifting reeds. His entire body seems to merge effortlessly into the clumps of reeds by the side of the lake and soon came within a dozen zhangs of the boat. Hidden behind a thick willow on shore, he broke off two pieces of reeds to hold in his hands and slipped soundlessly into the water. His movement in the water was as light as a feather such that he did not arouse even the slightest ripples. Actually, he had only recently achieved this level of movement after vigorously training. If it were a fortnight before, he would not have been able to move in this way. Chapter 100, Secrets You Are Listening at Novel Full Audio Chapter 100 Secrets Slowly Sinking to the Bottom of the Lake, Jun M. O. Xie opened his eyes to a world of azure-colored water. After reorienting himself, he proceeded to slowly walk toward the pleasure boat. It was not long before the water had turned pitch dark, indicating that he had already arrived underneath the boat. Jun M. O. Xie silently floated up before reaching out with one hand to tightly hold on to the hull. The reed held in his other hand was placed in his mouth and, with a sharp exhalation, the long piece of reed quietly extended out of the water by the side of the boat. A breath of fresh air filled Jun M. O. Xie's nearly asphyxiated lungs and a burst of relaxation involuntarily rushed through his body. A single careless mistake in this series of maneuvers and all his efforts would have gone down the drain. His targets would certainly become alert to his presence and possibly even try to kill him, leading to a fatal disaster. Jun M. O. Xie took no further actions and only waited motionlessly without showing any signs of impatience. His previous anxiety and misgivings have all but disappeared. He no longer worried in his heart whether the assassins will board the boat. Since he had already selected his targets, there is no room for regret. Intuition 
he firmly believes that the assassins will come on this boat. Therefore, he was endlessly patient. As long as he can breathe, he will wait. It was just like in his previous life when he had to rely on his intuition to pursue murderers or hide from his enemies. At this moment, he is the king of assassins. Jun Xie. After some time passed, there finally came the sound of a young lady's delicate laugh and the echoes of boorish men talking and laughing. As people embarked, the boat swayed, and the thudding of footsteps could be heard coming from above Jun Mo Xie. One, 2.6 individuals. Jun Mo Xie counted in silence. It seemed that three more people had joined the party of assassins that have arrived earlier. Once the party had boarded the boat, their distinctive cold aura suddenly caused a reaction in Jun M. O. Sia's mind. In this ice.cold water, the cold killing intent made Jun M. O. Sia feel a sense of familiarity. This is my world. The extravagant life of a noble, the glory, splendor, and wealth, admittedly was very comfortable, but Jun M. O. Sia was the king of assassins. He yearned to be unfettered like the king of wolves, arrogantly howling among a vast expanse of rolling grassland. Even if danger lurks around every corner, he still chose to be a king looking down on the world. Suffering leads to growth, the lonely enjoys the loneliness. A solitary shadow charging into the unknown, brandishing his sword in defiance of the heavens. Ten steps to kill a person, a thousand miles without leaving a trace. This is Jun M. O. Sia's grandest dream. Unfortunately, it is uncertain whether Jun M. O. Sia will have such an opportunity in his current body. No one spoke after entering the boat's cabin. Only the sounds of teacups softly touching followed by the sipping and slurping of tea and the occasional gentle laughter of a young lady could be heard. It was only after some time had passed when a hoarse voice spoke up. Lady Yuer, do you know when Lord Lu will arrive? My brothers have been waiting here and will get nowhere like this. The assassination attempt on the princess is a serious criminal charge. There is still an ongoing manhunt in the city. That incident hasn't even died down yet and we are already tasked with safekeeping these priceless Xian beast tendons. If by any chance something was to happen dot this one. A girl's delicate laugh was heard before she voiced out unperturbed. Hall Master Zhao, is there such cause for alarm? This is the N.I. Chong Pavilion. Don't tell me that you are now aware of what kind of place N.I. Chong Pavilion is. There will naturally not be any mishaps here at N.I. Chong Pavilion, but we can never be too careful. The failed assassination attempt has already put us on edge and backed up against a wall. With the many delays and the Xian beast tendons now in our possession, it really would not be wise to stay any longer in Tianxiang. The one surnamed Zhao was feeling somewhat embarrassed but replied nonetheless. So Hall Master Zhao is only thinking of washing his hands of this problematic situation. Perhaps the reason isn't just some manhunt. What do you have to say about your failure? Don't tell me the Hall Master plans on shifting the responsibility at this point. The young lady chided derisively. Hall Master Zhao only gave a snort and did not open his mouth to retort. However, one of his men spat in contempt. Lady Yuer, your words are too unfair. Surely we are not the only ones at fault for the previous mission's failure. If the intelligence you provided had not been wrong, would we have returned having failed so dramatically? If we had known earlier that a Sky Xian expert accompanied the princess, would our organization have planned the assassination like so? The mission difficulty is clearly not a trifling grade 3. It was an impossible task to challenge a Sky Xian expert with the strength of the members who were previously dispatched. We demand that Er Yi provide our hall master with an acceptable explanation for the losses we have suffered. The young lady was silent for a moment and then slowly replied. You received the money. Our side requested you to kill a princess with the strength of Silver Xian, did we not? And we had spent considerable amount of resources to arrange for a majority of the strength by the princess side to be away at that time. It could even be said that we have create the ideal conditions for you. If this is still not enough for you to succeed, then it is obviously you that is lacking. 
As for the Sky Xian expert. Hihi, whether or not this person really appeared, is still your problem. We paid you for results and not excuses. After a brief pause, the sound of the young lady standing up could clearly be heard. Slowly pacing back and forth, a low but clear voice said. I am but an insignificant young lady. Speaking to me regarding this business is not worth your while. Don't be impatient. When Lord Lu arrives, you will have plenty of opportunity to speak to him yourself. She sat down on a chair before picking up a cup of tea. For a moment, an incomparably awkward atmosphere filled the cabin. The assassins were extremely angry after hearing the young lady's sophistry. In the time that one of the assassins was about to flare up, the bow of the pleasure boat swayed slightly as two individuals made their way on board. The atmosphere in the cabin had shifted once again with the appearance of these two persons. Presumably, one of the new arrivals has a significant background and is certain to be a peak level expert. June Mo Xie could sense his surrounding gradually dim, the onset of night. On both shores of the Spirit Fog Lake, all kinds of lanterns shine upon the water surface, all the colors in profusion, as if a scene from a dream. What is going on? A profound and imposing voice asked after having felt the strange atmosphere in the cabin. The penetrating manner of speaking revealed an eminent status kind of bearing. Lord Lu, our blood sword hall demand that you provide us with an explanation for the business regarding the previous assassination attempt. The horse. Voiced assassin leader continued without reservation. Why were we not informed that a Sky Xian expert is escorting and protecting Princess Ling Ming? Our forces were caught unaware and have been entirely wiped out. The losses we suffered this time were unprecedented for my blood sword hall. Oh. So according to Hall Master Zhao, the assassination mission was not completed but the fault lies with us instead. Lord Lu said unflustered and seemingly with a smile. Then with the Blood Sword Hall's reputation, I'm sure we can renegotiate a lower payment for your lack of results. The assassin leader's hoarse voice replied. Lord Lu, you are an expert. How does this business have anything to do with the Blood Sword Hall's reputation? Once our Blood Sword Hall accepted payment, regardless of whom, we have always killed with no mistakes. But the missions have always been conducted under the assumption that the employer provided accurate information to determine the degree of difficulty and then dispatched the appropriate task force to ensure one hit one kill. While he was speaking with such intense vehemence, Jun Mo Xie was actually down below almost despising him to death. An assassin, even one who is leading a seasoned assassin organization, naively trusts in their employer's information. Truly ludicrous. Even if the employer's information was accurate, the assassin organization and the assassins themselves need to vet the details. To blindly trust your employer is to gamble with your own lives. The man continued to speak. Whether you were purposefully concealing or just overlooked this crucial piece of information, the fact remains that a Sky Xian expert had been present. If our grandmaster knew beforehand about the Sky Xian expert's participation, he would not have only sent two gold Xian level assassins. Perhaps our grandmaster would have personally undertaken this mission. The reason the mission was not completed was because your information was not satisfactory, how can the blame be on my blood sword hall? Not to mention that this assassination absolutely was not just a grade 3 mission. Although his tone was rather blunt and disrespectful, Lord Lai inexplicably was not angered. Instead he muttered to himself irresolutely for a while before asking. Are you certain? That person that was actually a Sky Xian expert. I am absolutely certain. The assassin leader nodded his head with extreme vigor. The Sky Xian expert's flying daggers were dark blue in color so his level of cultivation must have reached a peak level. What's more, the control he displayed was as light as a feather as if he hadn't used any power indicating that his intention was deterrence. This level of control is already nearing the legendary skills of the Supreme Divine Xian level existence. I dare to guarantee that although this expert is still in the Sky Xian realm, he is but one step away from the doorsteps of the Supreme Divine Xian realm. The more the assassin leader spoke, 
the more fortunate he felt that he had not personally participated in the operation this time. Otherwise, he may very well already be an ice.cold corpse. At this point, he felt confident that he had actually been tiptoeing around the gates of hell. His heart has already grown suspicious of this Lord Lu sitting in front of him as his eyes slightly narrowed. You did not intentionally deceive us so that we'll throw away our lives right. Sky Xian, Sky Xian Peak Level Expert Lord Lu paced back and forth, creased his brows and thought to himself. When did such a person appear in the capital? Why are they that so unconventional? Too abnormal. Lord Lu. How should we proceed with this matter? The black dot clothed assassin had waited for a long time without speaking but finally had to ask. Yes. Oh, well dot since you are sure about this matter, then this must be reported back to Er Yi. Lord Lu muttered. To have the protection of a Sky Xian expert, ordinary assassination methods will be ineffective. He raised his head to glance at the three men in front of him. Even though he did not speak, the implication is clear to those people that they are no longer adequate. What Lord Lu said is not wrong, we are also aware. With this Sky Xian level expert present, just the few of us are incapable of assassinating the princess. The assassin leader said, holding back his anger with great difficulty. But people that cannot even produce accurate information don't appear to be very useful either. Oh. Ha ha ha, Lord Lu trembled but immediately laughs before changing the topic of discussion. But you did not even kill Jun Emos yeah, such an opportunity gone forever, is indeed a great pity.